Have you ever witnessed something truly extraordinary being built? Where dreams turn into buildings and machines. Where human creativity goes beyond what you can even think of. In this video, we are going to journey through the biggest mega projects in the world. From deep under the sea to the highest reaches up in the sky, these projects are among the most ambitious puzzles that humanity has ever assembled. Stay with us until the end because we've put together the most amazing mega projects from around the globe. Starting our list at number one is Europe's biggest cross-country transport network is about to add a key missing link. An underwater tunnel that will sit 40 meters deep in the Baltic Sea. Officially called the Femarn Belt Fixed Link, this 18-kilometer-long tunnel is redefining the limits of engineering and will transform travel across Europe forever. The tunnel gets its name from the isolated island of Fehmarn, just off the mainland of Germany. Fehmarn is separated from Denmark by a 20-kilometer waterway known as the Fehmarn Belt. This is where the world's longest immersed tunnel is starting to take shape, and it will soon serve a massive purpose. Some 30 years ago, the European Union signed off on Europe's biggest infrastructure project ever. The Trans-European Transport Network would connect every corner of the continent with a network of roads, railways, and shipping lanes. With nine distinct corridors, this network strengthens the EU's economic, social, and territorial integration. By enabling seamless transport systems across borders and getting rid of bottlenecks, Europe aims to accelerate trade of goods, ideas, and much more. A major part of this network is the ScanMed Corridor, which crosses Finland, Sweden, Denmark, Germany, Austria, and Italy. It is a 5,000-kilometer-long link that originates in Malta in the south and ends with Finland's frosty plains. This is one of the world's most scenic travel routes that encompasses alpine tunnels and shipping lanes through the ocean. However, the corridor presents a problem as it approaches the Scandinavian peninsula. Travel across the Feymarn Strait is possible through a ferry or a 200-kilometer detour around Denmark. While this can be a scenic journey, it is quite time-consuming. For now, a ferry takes about an hour to make the 20-kilometer-long crossing. When completed, the Feymarn Belt Link will allow trains to cross the strait in just seven minutes, while the road link will help cars make the same trip in about 10 minutes. The planned rail link will reduce travel time from Hamburg to Copenhagen from five hours to less than three hours, while travelers will no longer have to make the previously long detour. Given the obvious benefits, the idea of connecting Germany and Denmark through the Feymarn Strait isn't new. However, the first concrete effort to build a link was made in 2008 with the idea of a Feymarn link. Denmark and Germany signed a treaty with many ideas under consideration to connect the two sides. When you think of building water crossings, immersed tube tunnels are usually the last option due to the complexity of the design. In comparison, building bridges or boring tunnels can be a much simpler task. So, the first plan for the Feymarn Belt was a rail and road link similar to the cable-stayed Orsund Bridge in Sweden. However, the idea was quickly shelved due to the fear of strong eastern winds that could potentially pose problems for the structure and may even cause shipping collisions. The next option was to drill under the sea floor using a tunnel boring machine, TBM, similar to the famous channel tunnel between Britain and France. However, this was also ruled out because the seabed was deemed unfit for drilling. This was supposed to be a high-speed rail and road link. However, this would require a significantly longer tunnel and the use of multiple TBMs, making the project longer and economically unviable. So, in 2011, the design teams finalized an immersed tube tunnel design. This would mean building an undersea tunnel made up of prefabricated segments fitted together in a trench underwater. While this is not a novel design, the length of the Feymarn Tunnel will be at least three times the size of any such tunnel built before. 
The 18-kilometer-long link will comprise two double-lane motorways, two electrified rail tracks, and a service passageway separating the tracks. Construction began in 2020 on the Danish side, and then in Germany a year later. Dredging work has already reached 80%, and the sand excavated will be used to build a beach in Lolland. Dredging work, however, is just step one of a long process. Engineers are going to build on a scale never seen before, adding to the complexity and uniqueness of the project. So, how do you build something that big? The longest tube tunnel in the world will consist of 89 massive concrete sections, each measuring 217 meters long, 42 meters wide, and 9 meters tall. Each one of these sections will contain two tubes for the highway, two for the railroad, and one for service access. To put the enormity of the structure into context, each section will weigh more than 200 heavy-duty cranes. To build such an enormous project, the company in charge of construction spent two years preparing the construction site. They built a harbor capable of receiving up to 80,000 tons of material deliveries each week, accommodations for 1,300 workers, and the world's largest tunnel factory where the concrete tunnel sections will be made. A massive challenge for the designers would be to build these sections on land and then lower them into the water. Since each section is so large, all 89 sections cannot be stored in a single facility meaning that as soon as each one is completed, it must be installed straight away. Several phases of the project are simultaneously underway, including the digging of the trench that will host the tunnel and building the factory where the tunnel sections will be constructed and stored. The construction company in charge of the project believes that the first tubular segment will be immersed in less than a year. Meanwhile, the whole project will be completed by 2029. The Feymarn Fixed Link is the second prominent underwater tunnel megaproject in Europe, following the Channel Tunnel. Given their massive scale, there have been comparisons between the two. However, the way they are constructed is very different. Channel Tunnel is a 50-kilometer tunnel built using tunnel boring machines instead of immersed pre-built tunnel sections. And while the Feymarn Belt Tunnel won't come cheap with a budget of $10 billion, the Channel Tunnel would have cost $22 billion when adjusted for inflation in 2023. Even then, Europe's newest tunnel has attracted criticism for its eye-watering budget. However, it is being built to last over 120 years, justifying the money spent on it. The tunnel is also planned to become profitable in the next 30 years, partly with the help of tolls collected on the soon-to-be-popular highway. Despite the concerns over cost, authorities across Europe have high hopes for the mega-project. This is why the European Union has agreed to bear about 10% of the project's total cost, while the rest of the project will be owned and paid for by Finland. Proponents of the mega-project believe that the Feymarn Belt Tunnel will open up Central Europe's corridor and allow an unprecedented amount of traffic to travel. The link will become a game-changer for European commerce, especially between Germany and Scandinavia, where annual trade is valued at over $100 billion a year. While its economic impacts are yet to be seen, the Feymarn Fixed Link promises to be an adventurer's dream. Number 2 on the 4th of July 2023, the Vegas skyline was lit up with the world's largest spherical structure, the MSG Sphere. Five years in the making, this $2.3 billion mega project is set to transform entertainment at the Vegas Strip forever. Vegas is known for many things. The city welcomes 40 million visitors to its renowned resorts, huge casinos, and extravagant nightlife. Vegas has Bellagio's Dancing Fountains, a replica of the Eiffel Tower, and Luxor, the strongest sky beam in the world. It is difficult to imagine an innovative piece of architecture that outshines all the glitter of this lively metropolis. However, the debut of this spherical structure might do exactly that, since it is unlike anything that exists anywhere in the world. 
At face value, the Sphere is an entertainment venue at 366 feet tall and 516 feet wide. It is the largest spherical structure in the world. The Sphere was announced in 2018 by the Madison Square Garden Company as the future biggest entertainment venue in the world. With its groundbreaking design, the Sphere aims to achieve the same significance in the Vegas entertainment scenes as the Madison Square Garden in New York. While the building has already debuted a fascinating exterior, it will open as a performance venue on the 29th of September with a series of U2 concerts. Construction of the Sphere started in 2019 with more than 3,000 construction workers involved in building this behemoth. It was initially supposed to open in 2021, but when you were building at that scale, delays are expected. Months of lockdowns and decreased manpower in 2020 did not help the timelines either, and the spherical dome ultimately topped out in 2022. Initial estimates had put the project's budget at $1.2 billion. However, that quickly changed as a result of design changes. Costs have escalated further during the supply chain crisis, taking the total budget to $2.3 billion. This also makes it the most expensive entertainment venue ever constructed in Las Vegas, surpassing the Allegiant Stadium, which is the newest home of the Las Vegas Raiders in the NFL. The most expensive building in Vegas is also the most fascinating upon completion. And it all starts with the exterior. The first thing to notice about the sphere is that it's just a giant LED. It is officially called the Exosphere and is covered with 580,000 square feet of fully programmable LED panels. A total of 1.2 million hockey puck-sized LEDs are capable of displaying 256 million different colors. Together, they form the largest LED screen on Earth, and its immense magnitude has been on full display. So far, the exosphere has transformed into Earth, a giant human eye, and the American flag for the July 4th fireworks. As time goes on, the exosphere will become a daily canvas featuring a wide array of art, light shows, and customized artistic content. It will transform according to the time of the year. For example, it could become a giant ball of ice for Christmas, or become a basketball on the opening day of the NBA season. The idea of illuminating it so vividly is also a genius marketing strategy, as brands from around the globe will want a spot on the world's biggest billboard. Some say this light show will be visible from space, but in any case, the exosphere warrants that this incredible building will take center stage in Las Vegas. Without even stepping foot inside the venue, its impact on Las Vegas will be noticed around the world. And it's just as incredible on the inside. The Sphere promised to be the world's most unique concert venue, offering audiences an experience like no other. A closer look at its interior tells us that the creators have certainly fulfilled that promise. The first thing that catches the eye is a 250-foot tall screen positioned right behind the performers. It is the world's highest resolution LED screen that wraps around the structure. If you thought that the IMAX cinema screens in New York were impressive, be prepared to have your mind blown. Seating inside the venue covers two-thirds of the space, offering over 18,000 seats. The immersive experience for the large audiences is completed with the most precisely engineered sound inside the dome. Every single seat will have its own sound system equipped with haptic technology. Using sound vibrations, this creates the experience of touch, making the viewers feel the show in the truest sense. For the sphere, a technique called wave field synthesis is used to create a surround system that can be customized for each performance. 3D innovator Holoplot is working to make this immersive sound system possible. According to a Holoplot press release, the Sphere's audio system will consist of about 1,600 permanently installed loudspeaker modules and 167,000 individually amplified loudspeaker drivers. The venue promises arguably the most sophisticated sound system to date, making this the most desirable spot to listen to live music in the world. While this is perfect for massive concerts, the Sphere also plans to host other entertainment events, including MMA, boxing, and esports competitions. 
Away from the performance halls, the Sphere has nine levels, housing a total of 23 suites on the third and fifth floors. The building is made more accessible with a 300-meter pedestrian bridge connecting it to the Venetian Expo. Future plans include building a Las Vegas monorail station to exclusively serve the Sphere and the Venetian. Fittingly enough, the first series of events at the Sphere are U2 concerts that will continue for over two months. The performers from the band are already in awe of what is about to unfold. U2's lead singer Bono described the significance of the Sphere quite accurately. Most music venues are sports venues. They're built for sports. They're not built for music. They're not built for art. This building was built for immersive experiences in cinema and performance. You can't come here and see an ice hockey game, he said. The sounds inside this seismic venue are yet to be heard, but its influence can be observed already. A video published by F1 shows that the Las Vegas Grand Prix in November will have a spectator zone at the Sphere. A 3.8-mile track for the race runs around the Venetian corridors, and the area will have views of turns 5 to 9 from where the racers will head towards the Las Vegas Strip. The Sphere will host the second-largest fan zone on the circuit and will feature a stage offering a variety of live entertainment. Its exterior will display race-related content in the most visible way imaginable. No wonder that this year's Grand Prix is tipped to be the most attended racing event in the city's history. In between the Formula One Grand Prix and U2 concerts, the Sphere will continue running its own content. CEO James Dolan has also revealed that robots will be programmed to give people guided tours of the Sphere. It is also interesting to note that the Sphere at the Venetian is not an isolated venue for Vegas. Instead, this is meant to kick off a global movement in entertainment. There will be more spherical venues following this one. The first location is likely to be Stratford, London, though the proposal remains at an initial stage amid opposition from certain quarters. In the meantime, the Sphere at the Venetian Resort is planning to go full throttle in the next few months. Despite the fanfare and excitement surrounding the venue's opening, there have been concerns over its environmental impact. Keeping a building of this scale illuminated at all times requires massive power resources. According to one estimate, the Sphere will use up as much electricity in a year as 100,000 homes in the U.S. To counter the criticism, Sphere Entertainment has submitted a 25-year proposal to draw 70% of the power required for the venue from solar energy. The company has also alluded to a billion-dollar economic impact to prove that the project is in public interest. Number 3 Buildings don't last forever, but they leave a lasting impression on those that see them. The Colosseums of Rome, the Pyramids of Giza, the Great Wall of China, the Great Temples of the Aztecs, and the Great Terraces of the Incas. All are monuments to the greatness of these past civilizations. But what about today, in this modern global civilization? What are the great monuments of our civilization? Well, probably every megaproject that pushes the bounds of what is possible. And the recently announced LINE, Saudi Arabia's trillion-dollar megastructure, is no different. Saudi Arabia has begun construction on probably the most ambitious megaproject in mankind's history to date. This megaproject, called the Mirror Line, was created by the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, Muhammad bin Salman, to leave a lasting mark in the history of the world's greatest monuments. It is going to be a double parallel, 500 meter tall, 170 kilometer long megastructure. To put this into perspective, imagine building two Empire State Buildings side by side a thousand times. So why does Saudi Arabia want to build this structure? What are the constraints to making this possible? And are they only building this to attract investors and media attention? For the past few years, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has drawn up transformational plans for the future like no other. This transformation plan has been dubbed Vision 2030, a plan that hopes to reduce the country's dependence on fossil fuels and shift its economy towards technology, tourism, and various other sectors. Since its announcement in 2016, the kingdom has poured investments heavily into a master plan called NEOM, 
which means new future. It is the kingdom's move to actualize a marquee plan, Vision 2030. What is NEOM? NEOM is to be a massive futuristic smart city in Tabuk province in northwestern Saudi Arabia. The site is north of the Red Sea and has a total area of 26,500 square kilometers. The city will consist of three mega projects. The first mega project is a floating eight side massive industrial complex called the Oxagon. The Oxagon was designed with the intent to serve as a port for shipping routes through the Red Sea. The next mega project is called Trojena, which will serve as a major skiing destination in the Arabian Peninsula. This outdoor skiing resort is meant to host entertainment and events throughout the year. But none of these projects are as massive or wildly ambitious as the project called the Mirror Line, simply called the Line. The Mirror Line was first announced in January 2021 as part of Mohammed bin Salman's Vision 2030. The details and plans for this aptly named line are so over the top that it's an understatement to call it bonkers. The line is a mega project that is made up of two 500 meter tall buildings parallel to one another, 200 meters of space in between, running through 170 kilometers of desert terrain. This line will have a mirror glass exterior this city is expected to contain 9 million residents, all living and working within the confines of the structure. The line will stretch forth from the coast of the Gulf of Aqaba to the countryside of the kingdom. These two parallel structures will be connected by a walkway with vertically built infrastructure between them. This interior will contain offices, public parks, and homes stacked atop one another. An ultra-high-speed transport system is planned to connect one end of the city to the other end in just 20 minutes. Simply put, the line's designers seem to want the regular infrastructure of a city and stack it vertically on top of one another. The planners claim that their city will be 100% sustainable, run on renewable energy with zero carbon emissions, and feature the most modern technologies. Those living inside will be fed through vertical farms integrated into the environment. The structure is also planned to include a marina for yachts and a sports stadium built at 300 meters above the ground. The line is structured to have three different layers, the pedestrian layer, the service layer, and the spine layer. At the ground level is the pedestrian zone. The pedestrian zone is going to be designed in such a way that no cars or roads will be there. It will mainly consist of trees, vertical farms, and public parks. It is built this way to encourage working so that its residents can maintain a healthy lifestyle. The second layer just beneath the pedestrian layer is called the service layer. The service layer houses all the shops, offices, and other commercial spaces. It will also contain residential buildings, which are just a five minute walk from the commercial hubs. The third layer functions as a spine layer. This is the layer that handles everything concerning the transportation of people and goods. This layer is reliant on an ultra-high-speed transit system that connects the different parts of the line from one end to another. The designers of the city also claim that this transport system is going to be AI-enabled. The premise behind the entire design of the line is that most modern cities were born out of the Industrial Revolution, and they, therefore, are built around machines. Meaning most modern cities are designed for machines, cars, and industries, rather than for humans. The designers of the line hope to save humanity from the nightmare of commuting, associated with a lot of large modern cities. Is the line possible? And what are the constraints for making it a reality? Well, despite this being the largest mega project in history and no one has attempted anything remotely close, Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman seems to think it's possible. The Saudi Crown Prince has called the mega project a revolution in technology, architecture, and civilization as a whole. But is that true? 
Humanity has built several supposedly impossible structures in some of the most treacherous terrains, like the pyramids, the Suez Canal, the Statue of Liberty, the Burj Khalifa, etc. But we have never accomplished something this massive, especially not in the time that Muhammad bin Salman claims. Simply put, they are trying to accomplish too much in too little time. One of the constraints to making the line project a reality is Saudi Arabia's past precedents in building massive infrastructure. Despite being home of the fourth tallest building in the world at over 600 meters, it has recently run into a snag with its Jeddah Tower project, which is supposed to replace the United Arab Emirates Burj Khalifa as the world's tallest building. The Jeddah Tower was meant to reach about a kilometer in height, but despite years of investment, the tower has yet to reach one-third completion, with many even believing that it might never be completed. Saudi Arabia's track record of human rights violations of its migrant workers also doesn't put it in the best light. Some migrant workers are paid paltry fees and made to live and work in unsavory conditions. These same migrant workers are going to be put to work in the thousands for Mohammed bin Salman's insane project, which he has sometimes referred to as his pyramids. The original natives of this region, about 20,000 people, have also been displaced from their homes by the Saudi government, and even some have been ended for simply protesting this. Another constraint the project is faced with is the issue of finance. When the project was first announced, it was estimated to cost $500 billion. But now, those estimates have risen to a whopping $1 trillion. This is money that Saudi Arabia is simply unable to raise itself, and will probably require the help of foreign investors to foot the bill, which might be their plan. The media publicity, investment, and technological growth that the country will receive as a result of this project cannot be overstated. All in all, the line is a beautiful dream, and like all dreams, it either becomes a reality or stays a dream. But even when it becomes a reality, it can still be a nightmare. The line is currently under construction, and recent Google satellite images show that the foundations are being set as you watch this video. It is expected to become a free market hub for global trade. Number 4 a trillion-dollar construction boom has been at the center of China's economic rise over the last few decades. Since the 90s, China has built some insane skyscrapers, megacities, rapid transport networks, and arguably the biggest international infrastructure initiative in history. However, one rarely talked about aspect of this rise is the construction of mega bridges. As of this year, China has more than a million bridges, some of which have broken geographical and technological barriers. Connecting modern China like never before are record-breaking mega-bridges which are becoming more and more expensive to build. Starting from hundreds of millions of dollars, the most expensive one cost over $20 billion. These are some of the most impressive mega-bridges in China telling a story of innovation and a growing global ambition. We start with a bridge over the Luzi Zhang, which translates to the Green Juice River. Stretching 798 meters over the river valley, it is not as long as some of the other mega projects we'll feature on today's video. However, the Green Juice Bridge is termed an engineering marvel given its innovative design and the complexity of construction. For starters, it is the longest single-tower suspension bridge in the world. Unlike other bridges of a similar length, it is held by a single tower on one side and the rest is supported by cables. From afar, the bridge looks like it defies gravity, giving the illusion of hanging mid-air without support. Then there's the rugged terrain where the bridge is built. All of the bridge's supporting elements, from the 156-meter tall tower to the tunnel anchorage on the other end, are built upon a steep slope. With a 54-degree angle, this is the world's steepest tunnel anchor. Despite the complexity of construction, the bridge has proven vital in its remote surroundings. It has become a key cog in the 190-kilometer-long Yuchu Expressway that connects the Yunnan region with major hubs like Shanghai. Going around this river valley previously took over an hour. 
However, the Green Juice River Bridge has brought that down to just two minutes. Vehicles can go at high speeds of up to 80 kilometers per hour on the bridge's four-lane deck. Construction on this complex megaproject commenced in 2019 and took three years to complete, almost the same time as another impressive bridge in the region. This is the highest bridge in the world. Standing 565 meters above the Baypan River, the Duguay Bridge is one of the more surreal structures in the world. Before Duguay, the world's highest bridge was the Sidu River Bridge, also in China, suspended half a kilometer above a river. The title of the highest bridge in the world calls for an important distinction from being the tallest. A bridge's height is the maximum vertical distance between the ground and the bridge deck. Meanwhile, the tallest bridge refers to the height of the structure itself, starting from the base of the towers that hold it. That title belongs to the Milau Viaduct in France, which is 343 meters tall. Back to the Duguay Bridge, which is also called Baypan Zhang Bridge. It runs for 1.3 kilometers on the confluence of Guizhou and Yunnan provinces, reducing the travel time between the two cities from five hours to just two hours. The bridge has a curved design, which, along with its incredible height, was forced by the extreme geography of the region. Designers had to elevate the bridge's height again and again to avoid cracks in the mountains surrounding the valley. Strong winds blowing through the canyon presented further construction challenges. The design also had to account for the region's high seismic activity. More than a thousand engineers and technicians worked with motion sensors and advanced monitoring systems to ensure the safety of the bridge. Construction workers used aerospace level materials to ensure that the bridge withstands all weather conditions and natural disasters. The terrain was previously inaccessible to cars, but motorists can now enjoy one of the most scenic routes in the world. Construction of the Duguay Bridge required $147 million, much less than the insane mega still to come. At number three is yet another mega bridge that was hampered by extreme geography. The two kilometer long Qishui River Bridge connects Sichuan and Guizhou provinces at an elevation of about 350 meters at its highest point. It is another mountainous region serving up the harshest conditions for construction. However, the biggest construction challenges came in the form of reduced accessibility to the construction site. A cliff on the Sichuan side meant that most of the heavy equipment required for conventional bridge construction could not be moved to the site. As an alternative, the engineers decided to build the deck off-site and then deliver it in three segments to the gorge. A system of 158 cables was implemented to support the deck, whose proper placement was ensured using 3D visualizations. The three truss segments measured 1,200 meters, 325 meters, and 205 meters in length, forcing the use of further advanced technologies to keep the workers safe. Using these technologies helped the planners with the efficiency of the project. It helped reduce the Bridge Tower Foundation footprint by a third, while also resolving 114 clashes before construction began. All innovations combined helped save 19 months of construction time. The bridge was opened for traffic ahead of schedule in 2019. Despite significant cost savings, building the bridge wasn't cheap, as the budget for this super project topped $250 million. Taking the second spot on today's video is the longest bridge in the world. The 165 kilometers long Danyang Kunshan Grand Bridge takes bridge building to a whole new level. Most of this bridge is in fact an elevated railway line that runs between Shanghai and Nanjing in East China's Jiangsu province. A nine kilometer section of the bridge runs above the Yangcheng Lake, where 2,000 pillars and steel cables were used to support it. What makes this bridge special is just the insane size of it, with the elevation never dropping below 30 meters. The structure is designed to withstand all sorts of troubles, ranging from extreme weather conditions to earthquakes and even a hit from naval vessels weighing up to 300,000 tons. Despite its sheer size, the bridge was completed within the strict four-year construction timeline. 
This was made possible with a manpower reaching over 10,000 workers. Building such a mammoth structure required a major investment. However, that's not something that has deterred China from completing some of the most ambitious megaprojects the world has ever seen. This was no different, as the Danyang Kunshan Grand Bridge piled up a construction bill of $8.5 billion, or $51 million for each kilometer. But this is not even half of what China spent on the final mega bridge on our list. One of China's most ambitious plans is to develop its Greater Bay Area, which encompasses 11 cities, including administrative regions of Hong Kong and Macau. China wants this region to become its own San Francisco. This requires building a robust transport network between territories, and an integral part of that push is the Hong kong zhuhai macau Bridge. At 55 kilometers long, it is the world's longest cross-sea bridge and is touted as an engineering wonder. While the link was proposed in 2003, construction only started six years later. The bridge did take nine years to complete. However, its sheer size provides some justification for the construction timeline. It is far from a conventional structure over water, as it incorporates a 6.7-kilometer submerged tunnel to avoid busy shipping lanes over the Pearl River Delta. This tunnel can be termed a megaproject of its own, as it is surrounded by two artificial islands measuring 100,000 square meters each. This was the part of the megaproject that gave its planners sleepless nights, but building the rest wasn't a piece of cake either. More than 400,000 tons of steel were used to complete the bridge, which was about five times the amount used in San Francisco's Golden Gate Bridge. When construction began, the bridge was estimated to cost an incredible $10 billion. However, years of delays and accusations of corruption meant the cost had shot up to about $20 billion. That is an eye-watering amount to spend on a bridge. But why did China still go through with a project that attracted much less traffic than anticipated? One plausible explanation lies in China's geopolitical ambitions. The top leadership in the country has always vied for greater control over Hong Kong, where pro-democracy protests have taken root in recent years. Better connectivity with the region helps China's political ambitions in Hong Kong. However, the Hong kong zhuhai macau Bridge remains an awe-inspiring structure and an engineering wonder. Number 5 All over the world, countries have spent loads of money, even billions, on big construction projects to improve our lives. But some of these megaprojects should have been scrapped right from the start. But not all of these megaprojects are the same. Some are set up for failure, while others turn into big projects that don't serve a purpose. From an unused interstate in Hawaii to a nuclear waste depot in Nevada, these projects are warning signs, showing us what can go wrong when big ideas don't quite work out. This leads us to explore the top 10 most useless megaprojects in the world. Some of these projects get more useless than others in the end, so make sure to stick around till the end of the video. Number 10. H3 Interstate In Hawaii, there is an interstate H3 which is about 26 kilometers long and takes you through some seriously amazing landscapes. Back in 1960, the idea was hatched to make this highway for defense reasons, connecting a naval base to an air station. But environmental groups and local Hawaiians were worried about the area turning too urban, and laws meant they couldn't start building for 26 years. Finally, in 1989, they got the green light and started building. Fast forward to 1997, and voila, the highway opened. But here's the catch. Even though it's stunning, some people call it the road to nowhere because it doesn't lead straight to downtown Honolulu. Plus, it got some flack for messing with important sites for native Hawaiians. And get this, it cost $1.3 billion to build, making it the most expensive per kilometer highway in the world. Wild, huh? Let's move on to the next one. At number 9, we have the Ciudad Real Central Airport in Spain. 
which was meant to be a solution to Madrid's crowded airport scene, aiming to handle 2 million passengers initially, which later expanded to 10 million. However, things took a different turn after it opened in 2009. Located 200 kilometers away from Madrid, lacking major airlines and accumulating a massive $350 million debt within a year, the airport went bankrupt in 2012. Despite being showcased as an abandoned spot on a British TV show in 2014, the airport didn't find a new purpose until 2009, storing grounded planes during the COVID-19 pandemic. Yet its future is shaky with the uncertainty of normal flight operations returning. This airport's story is a cautionary tale, built in the wrong spot, far from where it was needed, and without the major airlines to make it thrive. Despite a billion-dollar investment, it's now effectively useless for global travelers. Moving over to number 8, we have the St. Francis Dam Disaster. Back in the early 1900s, Los Angeles needed a big water stash, so they brought in a self-taught engineer, William Mulholland. He came up with plans for the world's largest arch-supported dam, the St. Francis Dam, which started in 1924 and finished in 1926. This massive dam, sitting in San Francisco Canyon, could hold 12 billion gallons of water. That's about 18,000 Olympic swimming pools. But here's the problem. As it filled up, cracks started forming. Mulholland brushed it off as no big deal, but it turns out the dam's foundations couldn't handle all that water weight. On March 12, 1928, just five days after hitting full capacity, disaster struck. The giant dam crumbled, releasing a 120-foot wave that raced one and a half miles, destroying everything in its path. Imagine 12 billion gallons on a wild, destructive journey straight to the Pacific Ocean in just five minutes. The next on our list is the Xiangwen Ghost Town, which steals the seventh place. Ever heard of Xiangwen International in Shijiazhuang, China? It's this massive 1,800-acre development that's, well, totally deserted. Over a few years, developers threw $3 billion into creating this fancy new residential wonderland. But here's where the plot thickens. The CEO got caught bribing state officials in 2014, and the whole company hit rock bottom, drowning in billions of dollars of debt. Bankruptcy was the only way out, and the government took over Xiangwen, leaving people who bought properties there seriously in the lurch. Now, picture this once promising city. It's a ghost town. Empty streets, silent buildings. Sure, there's talk of a new company wanting to give it a shot, but it'll take some serious cash to rescue this place. It's a bit of a letdown. If things had worked out, it could have been an awesome place to call home. Number 6. Malaysia's Unfinished Metropolis Imagine Forest City in Malaysia, a green, smart, and futuristic paradise rising from reclaimed land on four man-made islands. Picture this, a city near Singapore wrapped around an artificial forest with ecotech-like vertical gardens and jungle-like green rooftops. At first, it was like a Chinese citizen's VIP pass because China was mainly footing the bill. Rich Chinese investors flocked there to escape crazy home prices back home. Then came a leadership switch, and foreigners got the boot from owning property, causing a ruckus. And just when things seemed rocky enough, bam, the pandemic hit, travel bans, and all that jazz. Now, despite billions poured in, Forest City is stuck in the useless megaprojects list. Sales are sluggish, with whispers of less than 10 homes sold during the pandemic. It's a bit of a head-scratcher, considering the grand vision it had. Number 5. Myanmar's Ghost City – The Failure of Naypyidaw The capital of Myanmar, Naypyidaw, was built from scratch secretly in 2002 by the military leaders at the time. They decided to make this new capital because the old one, Yangon, was getting too crowded and was about to burst at the seams with double the population by 2050. So, they threw $4 billion into this brand new city project. 
But despite the hype, Napiedaw is like a city waiting for its big moment. With less than a million people calling it home, it's often called a ghost town. The huge 20-lane highway? Pretty much empty. The airport? Not buzzing with passengers. Even the shopping malls and hotels are kind of lonely. Still, Napiedaw was designed to be a city of the future, and people believe it might have its time to shine someday. The city's got potential, just waiting for its redemption. Number 4. Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge Meet the HZMB Bridge, a game-changer that slashed travel time between Hong Kong, Zhuhai, and Macau from a four-hour haul to just half an hour. This sea-crossing bridge spans over 34 miles. That's longer than driving across the entire width of Los Angeles, with a bridge to spare. It cost $18.8 billion, but not many people are cruising down this engineering wonder. Why? Well, you need a golden ticket, a crossing permit, and those are as rare as a unicorn. Only big shots like high-tech investors, top academics, politicians, or generous people even get a chance, and your ride has to be registered in all three cities. Even then, they cap it at 400 permits a day. Some people think it's a move to ease Hong Kong's crowded streets. But why spend almost two decades and a fortune building this thing just to keep it under wraps? It's a bit of a mystery, don't you think? Let us know in the comments. At number three, we have the Lotus Riverside Collapse. Imagine if your house was in Shanghai's Lotus Riverside project. Talk about wasting money. On June 27, 2009, disaster struck when one of the 11 13-story apartment blocks decided to take a horizontal nap. Luckily, no one was living there, but an unfortunate worker got caught inside while grabbing his tools. They were digging an underground garage pit beneath the building, piling all the dirt on one side. Bad move. The massive dirt mound messed with the soil, cranking up the pressure on the foundations until it snapped. The whole building went sideways. Thankfully, the other 10 blocks survived. But can you imagine the domino effect that could have been? Well, 400 other apartment owners didn't want to find out and demanded their money back. The developers ended up forking out nearly $2 million in damages and got charged with an additional $3 million for the cleanup. Number 2. Nevada's Nuclear Disaster The challenge of nuclear waste disposal has been a major concern globally due to its potential catastrophic effect if not handled properly. In the 1980s, the U.S. government wanted to find a safe place to store it. They thought Yucca Mountain in Nevada could be the spot because it's away from people, made of strong volcanic ash, and close to a nuclear testing area. But the people in Nevada weren't too happy about being the chosen ones for storing all that nuclear waste. They worried about water getting contaminated, especially since it's crucial for Native American communities. Despite protests, construction started in 2002, but it turned into a big legal and political mess. Obama stopped funding in 2010, saying it wasn't working out. Even when a court said to restart in 2013, not much changed. Fast forward to today, and Yucca Mountain isn't part of the plan anymore, according to the Biden administration. After spending over $17 billion, it's a useless project that never got off the ground. Dealing with nuclear waste is tricky, and it's clear there's no easy fix. But any plans need to listen to local worries and think about how it might affect the environment. Moving over to number one on our list, we have the Manju Nuclear Power Station. The Manju Nuclear Power Station in Japan is the poster child for how not to build things. So back in 1983, the Japanese were all excited about the idea of nuclear power, thinking it would revolutionize energy production. The plan was to recycle used nuclear fuel and make more energy, making things super efficient. Sounds cool, right? Well, turns out it was a disaster. For decades, this place only produced power for one hour. They found errors in 14,000 parts, including some that controlled important safety features of the station. 
Then in 1995, a fire broke out, and the staff tried to play it cool by editing security footage. Classic move. In 2010, a massive refueling machine fell into the reactor and got so wrecked it couldn't come back out. Talk about a comedy of errors. In 2011, Fukushima had a nuclear disaster, turning public opinion against nuclear power, especially Manju. By then, it had swallowed up almost $12 billion, and in 2016, it finally got shut down for good. Now they're planning to tear it down, but get this, it'll take until 2047 and cost another $3.4 billion. So, it's been a 60-year, $15 billion lesson in how not to build stuff. And here's the kicker. They named it after the Buddhist deity of wisdom. Number 6. Europe is currently undergoing a high increase in ambitious infrastructure and development projects that are set to shape the continent's future. Right now, the construction industry holds a key role in the European economy, with tens of thousands of small construction sites contributing alongside the completion of several notable mega-projects each year. These massive construction projects, ranging from skyscrapers to power plants, cost investments of millions or even billions of euros. In this video, we will explore the top 10 mega-projects currently under construction in Europe. These projects get bigger and bigger as we go down the list, so stick around with us till the end of this video. Number 10. The Stad Ship Tunnel in Norway Norway is working on the Stad Ship Tunnel, which is going to be the first ever tunnel for big ships, like oil tankers and cruise ships. Imagine it as a shortcut along the Norwegian coast, saving these ships up to two hours of travel time. Now, if you've sailed along Norway's coast, you might have hit some rough patches, especially near the Stad Peninsula. This place is famous for having one of the trickiest stretches of water along the whole Norwegian coast. In 2019, the Viking Sky ship had a close call here, losing power and narrowly avoiding a big problem. The ocean around the Stad Peninsula is no joke. Crazy currents and underwater anomalies create these unpredictable waves. That's why they are constructing the tunnel to boost vessel safety. The government gave the thumbs up for the tunnel, even setting aside funds in the 2021 and 2023 budgets. It's going to cost around 3.45 billion Norwegian krones, or 320 million US dollars, and they plan to start building it in 2024. Once done, the Stad Ship Tunnel will be the world's longest tunnel for ships, stretching 1.7 kilometers, 37 meters high, and 36 meters wide. If you think this is big, wait till you see the rest of our list. Number 9. Frankfurt International Airport Expansion Back in 2005, a massive $5.7 billion initiative was launched to make Frankfurt International Airport even better. The plan is to boost the facilities, make room for more passengers and cargo, and solidify its status as a major transport hub in Europe. Fraport, the airport operator, is behind this grand upgrade, investing 4 billion euros or 5.7 billion dollars to make it happen. Big changes are in the air. Frankfurt International Airport is Germany's main airport hub. It's where a lot of the action happens. Fraport, a public body, owns and runs the show. When it comes to keeping things organized in the air, Deutsche Flugsicherung takes charge of traffic control. In 2022, the airport saw 48.9 million passengers pass through. It's not just any airport either. It ranked as the sixth busiest in Europe for handling passengers that year. Quite the busy spot. Frankfurt Airport has been growing since 2005, adding a fourth runway which started operation in 2011 and a new Terminal 3 which is expected to be completed in 2026. This expansion aims to handle up to 100 million passengers annually and has doubled retail space in Terminals 1 and 2 to 20,000 square meters. Number 8. Plock Olefin Complex Expansion The expansion of the Olefin Complex in Plock is a major deal for the Orlen Group's production facility. 
It's a key project aimed at keeping the facility competitive in the long run. Think of it as a big investment in the European petrochemical industry, the largest one in the last two decades. This project has a vision that extends for decades, marking a big development for the Orland Group. So, by 2025, we're expecting Olefin's complex to kick into action. And get this, it's not just any complex, it's a versatile powerhouse that'll play a crucial role in making things we use every day, from car parts and home gadgets to cleaning products, medical supplies, and even materials for making clothes and protective masks. It's going to be a game changer in multiple industries. Number 7. Sina Schelt Project, France, Belgium. France is up to something big. They've got this major project called the Sina Nord Europe Canal. The plan is to build an efficient canal connecting the Oise River to the Dunkirk Scheldt Canal. This canal is part of a grander scheme called the Sina Scheldt Canal Initiative. It's all about linking up the Rhine and Sina bases using inland waterways. They're creating a watery highway to connect some major river systems. They've got some big goals in mind, like boosting trade and transportation with neighboring countries, easing traffic on the A1 motorway, and cutting down on CO2 emissions. The canal is going to stretch over 107 kilometers, replacing current waterways and making room for more barges. Six locks and three aqueducts are in the works, and they're throwing in a budget of 4.7 billion euros to make it all happen. The plan is to wrap it up by 2024, and once it's done, this canal will be a crucial link between the Sina and Scheldt rivers, making inland water transport a breeze. Number 6. Brenner Base Tunnel, Austria, Italy In the Eastern Alps, the Brenner Base Tunnel is underway, a 55-kilometer-long railway masterpiece beneath the Brenner Pass. This tunnel will connect Innsbruck, Austria to Franzenfest, Italy, taking over part of the existing Brenner Railway. Now, the Brenner Pass is a crucial route between Northern and Southern Europe, but it's got its issues, traffic jams and environmental challenges. Enter the Brenner Base Tunnel. It's here to save the day by making the railway connection top-notch, letting trains zoom through the Alps in no time. It's like a super-speed upgrade to make travel through this picturesque region smoother and more efficient. Currently, trains in the area are a bit slow, cruising at around 70 km per hour due to steep tracks at the Brenner Pass, which sits pretty high at 1,371 meters above sea level. But there's a game-changer in the works, the Brenner Base Tunnel. Austria, Italy, and the European Union are teaming up for this project to speed things up. Once it's done, together with the Intal Tunnel, it will be the world's longest underground railway connection at 64 kilometers. They're aiming to finish it all up by 2032. Number 5. Lyon Turin High Speed Rail, France, Italy. The Turin Lyon High Speed Railway project is on a mission to link up Turin and Lyon with a 270 kilometer rail line, including the Mont d'Ambine base tunnel, the world's longest rail tunnel at 57.5 kilometers. It's a big deal, estimated to cost around 25 billion euros. The main goal is to shift freight traffic from trucks to rail, cutting down on pollution and making passenger travel faster. Now, the European Union is backing this up, covering 40% of the tunnel costs, with a potential increase to 55%. But here's the twist. The project has faced some heat. There's criticism due to declining traffic, environmental concerns, and the fact that planes are still a tad faster along the Milan-Paris route. The No Tav movement is standing against the project. This journey started back in 2002 with civil engineering work, and they completed a 9-kilometer section between 2016 and 2019, making up 8% of the final tunnel length. The plan is to wrap up this base tunnel masterpiece by 2032. Number 4. The Feymarn Tunnel The Feymarn Belt Fixed Link, also known as the Feymarn Belt Tunnel is an ongoing project which is all about building a tunnel connecting the Danish island of Lolland to the German island of Feymarn. 
It spans the 18-kilometer-wide Faymarn Belt in the Baltic Sea and is set to become the world's longest road and rail tunnel. Once this tunnel is ready for action, you can zip between northern Germany and Lolland in just 10 minutes by car or 7 minutes by train. Compare that to the current 45-minute ferry journey, and that doesn't even include waiting and boarding time. The high-speed rail in the tunnel can hit speeds of up to 200 kilometers per hour. Talk about zooming. Now the numbers. The project was initially priced at 5.5 billion euros, but by the time Denmark and Germany signed the treaty in 2010, it had increased up to 7.4 billion euros. Denmark is footing the bill and collecting tolls for the tunnel, while Germany is chipping in 800 million euros to connect it to their motorway network. This tunnel is replacing the busy ferry service between Rudby and Puttgarten, known as Vogelfluglini in German and Fugelflugslinjen in Danish. It's not just a tunnel, it's a key link between Central Europe and Scandinavia, making travel faster and transportation more efficient. Number 3. Horn C3 Offshore Wind Farm the Horn C3 is a massive offshore wind farm project strategically placed in the North Sea, about 120 kilometers off Norfolk and 160 kilometers off Yorkshire. This powerhouse is no joke, with a capacity of nearly 3 gigawatts, making at least 2.85 gigawatts of clean electricity. That's enough to power over 3 million homes in the UK every day. Horn C3 is set to start running in 2026. The cost is estimated to be around 8 billion British pounds. That's 9.96 billion dollars. It matters because it's not just about the electricity. This wind farm is a key player in boosting energy security, ramping up renewable power generation, and helping the UK hit its climate targets. Horn C3 is like a green energy superhero in the making. Number 2. Flamanville 3 over in the Cotentin region of northern France, Flamanville 3 is making waves as one of the biggest industrial projects in northern Europe, standing tall with Finland's Old Kiluoto 3. Electricite de France and Framatome are the driving forces behind this massive undertaking, busy with the construction and commissioning of the EPR reactor. But as we know, big projects often come with challenges. Flamanville 3 has faced its fair share of setbacks, including some hefty delays and cost overruns. Originally aiming for an operational start in the first quarter of 2024, it was pushed back at least an extra six months. And as for the budget, well, that took a hit too, going up by 500 million euros. That's 531 million dollars and bringing the total expense to 13.2 billion euros. A multinational crew of about 2,800 people from 55 different countries is on the job, showing the large scale of this project. Flamanville 3 is packing some serious power, boasting a net capacity of 1,630 megawatts and a gross capacity of 1,650 megawatts, with a thermal capacity of 4,300 megawatts. EDF wears both the owner and operator hats for this nuclear powerhouse. And now the number one item on our countdown list. Number 1. Edge East Side Tower Finally, the Edge East Side Tower is currently under construction. This stunning office skyscraper in Friedrichshain, Berlin is a true masterpiece of architecture. The brilliant minds at the Bjarke Ingels Group brought this vision to life, starting construction in 2018 and getting the final nod in November 2019. It is a soaring tower reaching 142 meters high, adorned with an iconic facade that's sure to turn heads. Situated at the southern end of Warschauer Brook, it's not just a building, it's a symbol of innovation and design. Number 7. From the longest undersea tunnels to record-breaking solar power bases, and from data centers in the desert to an ever-expanding high-speed rail network, these are the biggest mega-projects in China's trillion-dollar transformation, the most expensive of which may cost upwards of $100 billion. At number 5, the world's longest water tunnel, which is about to become a key component of China's biggest water diversion project. 
For a country as big as China, water diversion is an integral part of the economy, and constant efforts are needed to balance the water resources between its vast territories. The country's south has a significant water surplus, resulting in frequent floodings, while the north faces severe water shortages. To overcome that, China has devised a south-to-north water diversion project, under which a 1,400 kilometers long open canal will divert water from the Yangtze River to northern China. Since becoming operational in 2014, the project has transferred over 50 billion cubic meters of water from the Yangtze River to northern China, benefiting over 150 million in the process. The next step in this mega-transfer project is building the longest water tunnel in the world. The 195-kilometer-long Yinjiang buhan Tunnel will carry water from the Three Gorges Dam to the Han River, from where it will be transferred further north. Upon completion, the Yinjiang buhan Tunnel will overtake the 120-kilometer-long Payane in Finland. While the plans are in place to start construction this year, Building this record-breaking tunnel will take over a decade and will cost China upwards of $9 billion. However, the project will ultimately be well worth the cost, as it will bring food production to a desert area as big as the state of Texas. At number 4. Yantai Dalian Undersea Tunnel The Chinese cities of Yantai and Dalian are less than 100 kilometers apart when traveling in a straight line. However, the largely enclosed Bohai Sea is in the way. The journey around the sea makes this a 1,500-kilometer trip, and it takes eight hours to cross the waterway via a 15-year-old ferry service. But now, China is embarking on a $43 billion mega-project to overcome this problem. The Bohai Strait Undersea Tunnel will span the length of the strait and cut the journey time to just 40 minutes. With a total length of over 90 kilometers, the undersea section of the Bohai Tunnel would be longer than the combined length of the Seikan Tunnel and the Channel Tunnel, which are currently the two longest undersea tunnels on the planet. While the tunnel firmly remains in the plans, it was proposed three decades ago. However, work has failed to commence so far because of environmental and economic concerns involved. However, Decades-long delays for such challenging megaprojects are commonplace, and a similar exhausting process was observed during the construction of the Seikan and Channel Tunnels. As soon as the construction starts, the Bohai Tunnel will have a 10-year timeline. The spending on the project tops the Three Gorges Dam. But not even the Three Gorges comes close to the biggest megaproject featured on today's video. At number 3. High-Speed Rail to Tibet Along with these impressive undersea tunnels, a high-speed rail expansion also forms a key part of China's trillion-dollar makeover. As of 2023, China already has over 40,000 kilometers of high-speed rail, which is twice the rest of the planet combined. However, they are now going a step further and will look to expand the infrastructure to 70,000 kilometers by 2035. The most ambitious and the most complicated of these expansions is a 1,600-kilometer line connecting the southwestern Sichuan province to the Tibetan capital Lhasa. It is one of the most complicated railway projects in the country, as the rail tracks will pass through earthquake-prone regions with altitudes reaching 3,000 meters. Hundreds of tunnels will be built along the route, with one 10-kilometer-long tunnel passing 1,200 meters below the surface in the Tibetan mountain range. The completed railway line will consist of three major segments, two of which have already been completed. Construction is currently underway on the longest section of the rail network, totaling more than 1,000 kilometers. A total of 72 tunnels will be built in this phase of the project many of which will go beyond 30 kilometers. The Sichuan-Tibet Railway will serve as the second rail link between Tibet and western Chinese provinces after the first connection became operational in 2006. In addition to increasing connectivity, the country also hopes to promote tourism in western parts of the country. 
The longest segment of the rail network will also support the highest speeds, with trains capable of operating at 200 kilometers per hour. At this rate, the mega project will reduce travel times between the two regions from 36 to 13 hours by the end of the decade. This railway link to Tibet will cost $50 billion, still half of the budget for China's biggest mega project. At number 2, $65 billion data centers. China's East Data West Computing Plan involves building huge data centers in far-off western provinces for internet companies based in the East. The project also carries criticism from certain quarters over its utility, as telecom companies would rather process data closer to home. The government, on the other hand, sees this as an opportunity to redistribute the perks of China's growth in the telecom sector. China has digitized at a much quicker pace than the rest of the world, which means that its carbon footprint is also increasing with every new data cluster. Therefore, moving west to cooler climates is also a necessity for Beijing. The abundance of renewable energy will also come in handy while a remote setting will also insulate China's domestic market from external shocks. The project will set up eight computing hubs and data center clusters as China aims to build an integrated data center system by 2025. Building these clusters won't come cheap, as they will cost more than $65 billion a year, a threefold increase from just a year ago. This greatly expensive megaproject is seen as China's way of preemptively tackling future data storage demands of a thriving tech industry. The country's big data and analytics industry will grow to $25 billion in 2025, and the data center project is an effort to be ready. However, some experts have expressed concerns about creating an oversupply and hurting investors and the local economies in the end. And at number one, the $100 billion renewable energy in North China. China's transformation will be complete with the most ambitious push towards renewable energy ever. Inner Mongolia, an autonomous region in China, is known for its vast deserts, including the Gobi Desert. The region is also home to major sections of the Great Wall and is the biggest producer of coal in China. However, China is now spending billions of dollars to take advantage of Inner Mongolia's cheap land, frequent winds, and blazing sunshine. Construction has already begun on an unprecedented buildup of renewable energy through wind and solar power bases. The first phase of the project includes 100 gigawatts of turbines and solar panels and will be completed in a year. Construction is also underway on a four times bigger installation that could potentially produce twice the amount of renewable power produced in the U.S. The total output from these projects will ultimately be closer to the total installed renewable capacity of all of Europe. China's newfound enthusiasm towards renewables is driven by Xi Jinping's pledge to peak emissions by 2030 and a commitment to global carbon neutrality. China is investing upwards of $100 billion in its renewable energy infrastructure and hopes that it will bring a major economic boost to its underdeveloped western regions. In commissioning these far-off farms, China is also risking escalating costs because of the transmission costs over long distances. Maintaining this massive infrastructure in remote areas will also be expensive to achieve global superiority in renewable energy sources. The challenge that remains for China in its pursuit of climate goals is how to get rid of coal in the energy grid. A rapid transition towards renewables might just be the answer. Whatever the fate of these projects, China's megaproject spending is unlikely to cool off in the coming years. Despite the continuous warnings of an economic meltdown, China is backing its time-tested strategy of going big on billion-dollar infrastructures. Number 8. The United States has been the site of some of the most ambitious megaprojects in history, such as the Hoover Dam in Nevada and the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. Today, the nation persists in surpassing limits by undertaking new billion-dollar construction projects across various industries, including infrastructure, renewable energy, and scientific attractions. 
Each year introduces remarkable new projects that not only bolster economic growth, but also enhance employment prospects. Numerous construction projects are expected to achieve significant development milestones, promising a host of highlights for the construction industry in the United States. With climate change taking center stage, these ongoing initiatives demonstrate a wide range of strategies for decarbonizing the built environment, encompassing ecological restoration and adaptive reuse. This leads us to explore the top 10 biggest construction projects that are currently going on in the United States. Some of these projects are getting more and more pricey by the day, and I bet you can't wait to find out the priciest of them all. Let's start. Number 1. California High Speed Rail Currently under construction in California, the California High Speed Rail project will link Anaheim and Los Angeles to San Francisco. Covering an impressive 800 miles, the route comprises 24 stations and enables speeds of up to 220 miles per hour, drastically reducing travel time. So instead of spending all day on the road, you'll be able to get from LA to San Francisco in just 2 hours and 40 minutes. It's a big project, estimated to cost around $77 billion, but it's definitely one of the most exciting things happening right now. The high-speed rail network is committed to relying solely on renewable energy sources. This eco-friendly approach not only reduces transportation emissions, but also contributes to the state's sustainable transportation network, aiding in the attainment of its climate objectives. In fact, the rail system is projected to decrease the annual use of foreign oil by 12.7 million barrels and cut greenhouse emissions by 12.5 billion pounds. That's equivalent to the emissions from 1 million cars. Governor Jerry Brown initially proposed this extensive project in the 1980s, but it didn't get off the ground until 2012 when the Obama administration pushed it forward. However, due to various legal battles and protests, the construction of the first 119-mile section didn't commence until 2015, roughly three years later than anticipated. As a consequence of the prolonged timeline, the budget for this colossal endeavor has also expanded significantly. By the project's expected completion at the end of the decade, the total cost might soar to as high as $105 billion. Do you think this is the priciest? Let's check out the next on our list. Number 2. The Gordie Howe International Bridge our next noteworthy project is the Gordie Howe International Bridge, a stunning cable-stayed international bridge extending across the Detroit River, connecting the cities of Detroit in the United States and Windsor in Ontario, Canada. Once completed, the bridge's central span, measuring an impressive 853 meters, will claim the title of the longest cable-stayed bridge in North America. Boasting two striking A-shaped towers, the bridge will accommodate six lanes for vehicular traffic, alongside a spacious 12-foot-wide corridor designated for cyclists and pedestrians. The Gordie Howe International Bridge is all set to make travel between the US and Canada super smooth, especially with cross-border traffic expected to jump from 18,500 cars a day in 2016 to 26,500 by 2025. The bridge was named after Gordie Howe, the legendary Canadian ice hockey player who rocked it with the Detroit Red Wings for a whole 25 years. Even though he passed away two years before they started building the bridge, they're honoring his legacy with this amazing project. Number 3. Madison Square Garden Sphere Madison Square Garden Sphere, taking shape in Las Vegas at the Venetian Resort. The initial cost has surged by 9% due to inflation, now totaling around $2.18 billion, but they're still on target to wrap up construction in the latter half of 2023. This colossal sphere is set to accommodate 20,000 visitors and features 23 VIP suites, all of which are expected to significantly bolster the state's tourist economy. As part of the project, MSG Entertainment plans to deck out the sphere with wraparound LED displays on both the interior and exterior, delivering high-resolution visuals visible from miles away. 
Inside, an immersive 4D functionality and a spatial sound system aim to transport visitors into the on-screen environment, creating a one-of-a-kind experience that's bound to draw in crowds from all corners of the globe. Number 4. American Legion Bridge Replacement The new American Legion Bridge I-270 Traffic Relief Plan is all geared up to tackle one of the country's biggest traffic snags between Maryland and Virginia. Apart from erecting a brand new American Legion Bridge, this infrastructure endeavor will also encompass 37 miles of highway enhancements along I-270 from I-380 to I-70. The relief plan comes in two phases. The first phase down south involves replacing the American Legion Bridge, along with adding two fresh high-occupancy toll managed lanes to I-495 and one to I-270. The second phase up north is currently in the early stages of a transportation study that will guide future improvement plans. While the estimated construction cost hovers around $6 billion, the Center for Regional Analysis at George Mason University anticipates these enhancements will spur approximately $12.6 billion in economic activity. Number 5. Related Santa Clara Related Santa Clara, currently taking shape across a sprawling 240 acres. It's going to be an awesome blend of commercial, residential, and retail spaces. The whole deal is a partnership between the City of Santa Clara and related companies, aiming to turn this former golf course into a happening, innovative spot that both locals and tourists will love. At an estimated cost of $8 billion, Related Santa Clara is set to be the biggest private mixed-use project in Silicon Valley. They're planning to weave in plenty of public spaces and revamp the city's transportation network, making it super convenient for residents, workers, and visitors to get around, which should pump a lot more money into the local economy. Number 6. JFK Airport Expansion JFK Airport in New York City is currently undergoing a comprehensive overhaul with a total price tag of $18 billion, which includes the addition of 23 new gates across various terminal projects. While Terminal 8 completed its modernization in 2022, Terminals 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6 are slated to follow suit and wrap up construction by approximately 2030. Just last year, the groundbreaking $9.5 billion Terminal 1 initiative commenced, marking the start of the airport's third and final phase. Simultaneously, preparations are underway for the $4.2 billion Terminal 6 project, covering a vast 1.2 million square feet area equipped with 10 new gates. Collectively, these terminal revamps will enable JFK Airport to accommodate a greater number of aircraft and travelers, thereby expediting and streamlining travel operations. Number 7. Hudson Tunnel Project The Hudson Tunnel Project is a major player in the long-awaited Gateway Program. This program is all about fixing up and swapping out those ancient railway tunnels that run beneath the Hudson River. Now, the plans to amp up the tunnel and boost its capacity have been on the table since 2009, but things didn't kick into gear until 2012, when Hurricane Sandy caused a whole lot of flooding. That mess put a hold on repairs until they could get some new tunnels built. Now, even though the U.S. Department of Transportation recently chipped in $292 million for this infrastructure project, it's just a fraction of the $16 billion they're expecting this whole thing to cost. But hold up, the Gateway program is projecting that once these shiny new tunnels are up and running, they're going to spark up about $19 billion worth of economic activity during construction. Plus, they'll provide some serious long-term protection against crazy climate events. Number 8. The Hudson Yards in New York Hudson Yards is the hottest thing to hit New York since the good old Rockefeller Center back in the 1930s. This project in Manhattan is pulling off a grand slam with a mind-boggling $25 billion price tag, making it one of the most expensive mega-projects ever seen. It is estimated to cost $20 billion for construction alone. You'll find this gem chilling on the west side of Midtown Manhattan, right next to the West Side Highway. 
What's really cool is that most of this mammoth development is being built on a platform stretched over the west side yard, which is essentially a storage spot for Long Island Railroad trains. Stretching from 30th Street in the south to 43rd Street in the north, this massive 28-acre residential wonderland is being brought to life by the NYC Department of City Planning and NYC Economic Development Corporation. Number 9. 2nd Avenue Subway Line The 2nd Avenue Subway Line in Eastside Manhattan is cruising its way under 2nd Avenue. This snazzy subway line is going to stretch a cool 8.5 miles all the way from Harlem 125th Street to Hanover Square, with the capacity to cater to over 500,000 passengers each day. Would you believe this massive $17 billion project was first proposed a whole century ago? Back then, it was supposed to be a part of the independent subway system of New York City. The first phase of this mammoth construction from 72nd Street to 96th Street is up and running like a charm. As for the second phase, well, it's in the works, but it might gobble up another two billion before it's done. What do you think? Number 10, Project Connect Texas. The Project Connect program is on a mission to give Austin, Texas a major transportation facelift. This bold move, led by the Capital Metro, involves beefing up the existing red line and extending it with not one, but two light rail lines, a bus rapid transit line, and a commuter train line. There will be a snazzy transport tunnel cutting right through the heart of the city, an all-electric fleet of buses and trains, and new park and ride spots dotted all over the service area. Back in 2020, Capital Metro got its hands on 12 electric buses, and they're aiming for 400 electrified buses and trains in operation by 2040. The whole shebang is expected to cost around $7.1 billion, with the funds rolling in from both municipal and federal sources. They're planning to cover the tab by hiking up the local property tax rate by 8.75 cents per $100, a 4% increase. Due to some financial jitters during the COVID-19 outbreak, the initial cost estimate of nearly $10 billion was scaled back to a more manageable $7.1 billion. Construction for the project kicked off in February 2022, although the exact completion date is still up in the air. Number 9. Imagine the anticipation and excitement surrounding the launch of a huge construction project, only to witness it crumble under the weight of unforeseen errors and miscalculations. Such instances have happened to several high-profile mega-projects worldwide, leading to big financial losses and wasted resources. For an architect, even a small mistake can lead to a disaster, causing both financial loss and risking people's lives. Sometimes a tiny error, like a bolt being placed slightly wrong, can make a whole bridge crumble. Or a wrong measurement can put a building at risk of collapsing. This is why architects need to aim for perfection, because they hold the responsibility of many lives in their hands. The sad reality is that mistakes happen in this field, just like in any other. But when they happen in this line of work, the effects can be much worse because buildings and bridges are used by lots of people at once. This leads us to delve into some of the most dangerous and expensive construction mistakes in the world that serve as warnings for the industry and beyond. These mistakes become increasingly concerning as we reach the end. Number 1. 20 Fen Church Street The 20 Fen Church Street building in London tops our list of expensive construction blunders. It's known as the Walkie Talkie Tower because of its unique but unattractive shape. In 2014, this skyscraper snagged the Carbuncle Cup, an award from Building Design Magazine for the UK's ugliest building. Despite the humorous award, the tower has created various issues. According to the UK's Daily Telegraph, the building caused a wind tunnel effect that knocked down shop signs and even knocked pedestrians off their feet. In 2013, the building's south-facing wall reflected sunlight onto the streets, causing a car's bodywork to melt. The trouble started when they were designing the building. Because it's covered in a lot of glass, it reflects the sunlight, 
but unlike other tall buildings with flat walls, this one has a curved side facing the south. During the day, this makes the walkie-talkie tower focus the sunlight onto the street and the buildings across from it, which resulted in melted cars. Even people walking by had a hard time too, because the wind got crazy strong and blew stuff around, making it tough to walk. This happened in summer, which means the sun's rays got reflected six times more than usual. This led to crazy amounts of intense heat. To tackle this, they had to put special non-reflective film on the tower's windows. This fix cost $14 million. Number 2. Jeddah Tower in Saudi Arabia The 20 Fen Church Street isn't the only architectural mistake out there. The Jeddah Tower in Saudi Arabia is another one on the list. Formerly known as the Kingdom Tower, it's set to become the home of the world's highest observatory and the tallest building globally. Interestingly, the tower was initially planned to have a helipad, but it's now expected to feature a separate 90-foot diameter outdoor balcony. This construction is a part of Saudi Arabia's vision to reduce its reliance on oil and expand its economy into other areas, following the footsteps of Dubai and other countries. The project, which kicked off in 2013 with a targeted completion date of 2018, has faced significant delays. Now, it's been seven years since construction began on this huge project, yet there's no clear indication of when the building will finally reach its full height. As of now, only about a third of the project has been finished. According to Arabian Business, Prince Al-Walid bin Talal, a Saudi Arabian billionaire, disclosed that the project would be delayed from its initial target completion date of 2018. The report indicated that the Jeddah Tower faced a 12-month setback, attributed to various factors, including financial problems related to the contractor and financial backer, Saudi Bin Laden Group. Number 3. Citigroup Center The Citigroup Center, an office skyscraper in Midtown Manhattan, New York, has an interesting history. When the building was constructed in 1970, space was limited, so the architect made the bold decision to build over the site where St. Peter's Lutheran Church stood. To achieve this, they built the 915-foot tower on stilts, allowing it to effectively hang over the church. Right from the start, it seems like a lot of people would think this design wasn't a great idea, but the developers went ahead and built the skyscraper anyway. It turned out that the design made it vulnerable to toppling over during big storms or hurricanes. If that happened, it could set off a chain reaction, making other skyscrapers around it collapse too. Actually, officials figured out that the building might fall within 16 years of being built. The city didn't tell the public about this and instead took on a huge project to fix the design flaw, making sure the Citigroup Center was safe. Surprisingly, the residents of New York City didn't find out about this massive fix until years later, well after it was all sorted. Number 4. Stuttgart 21 Stuttgart 21 is a massive railway project in Germany, considered one of the country's most impressive engineering ventures. However, a major blunder by the engineers has led to a cost increase to a figure nearly double the initial estimation. Although the project started in 2010 with an anticipated completion by 2019, it remains unfinished. Initially valued at 4.5 billion euros, it has now surpassed its original plan by 4 billion euros and 6 years. The construction has faced multiple delays owing to various reasons. The decision to transform the train station into a transit hub came from the inefficiency of the previous terminus setup, which required trains to depart in reverse, causing unnecessary delays. This move aimed to integrate the station into a continuous 1,500-kilometer high-speed rail line linking Stuttgart, Paris, Munich, Vienna, and Bratislava. However, the project was delayed primarily due to problems in tunnel construction. Right from the start, engineers faced a long-standing issue, the presence of unpredictable rocks beneath the city. These unstable rock formations, particularly the anhydrite type that expands when wet, presented major risks and complicated the construction process, which made it hard to work on the project. 
Simon Foster, a physicist, pointed out the upcoming trouble, explaining how many years back the gypsum crystals turned into rock beds when the oceans shrank. This created anhydrite, which acts like a sponge, swelling up when it gets wet. It's a big problem when you're building tunnels. The train is expected to start running in 2025, more than six years past the original schedule. But considering all the issues piling up, some people believe that Stuttgart 21 might not happen at all. Number 5. I-35 Bridge, Minneapolis, USA The bridge in Minneapolis, Minnesota that crossed the Mississippi River and linked the I-35 freeway is known as one of the biggest architectural disasters in recent times. On August 1, 2007, tragedy struck as the bridge, vital for the daily commute of 140,000 individuals, gave way, leading to the devastating loss of 13 lives and leaving 145 others injured. Investigations later revealed that the collapse was from a critical design flaw, the presence of excessively thin plating along the rivets. This structural weakness bent under the huge weight of the heavy vehicle traffic, eventually leading to the disastrous collapse. The fall of this important bridge had major effects, leading to lots of investigations and making people worry about the safety and upkeep of infrastructure all over the United States. Number 6. Lotus Riverside in the vibrant city of Shanghai, China, they put up a housing complex called Lotus Riverside, which included 11 buildings, each with 13 floors. This project was a big deal and was seen as a success because lots of people in the city needed places to live, and this development helped provide housing for many. It was realized later that the architects made a big mistake in planning when they started digging the underground garage near the buildings. This allowed water from the nearby river to seep in, making the ground under Lotus Riverside all muddy. Because of this, one of the towers fell. This disaster was a huge mistake and a sad event, especially because the complex was meant to be a big success for the city. Number 7. Leaning Tower of Pisa Even though the Leaning Tower of Pisa is seen as a wonder of the modern world and draws millions of visitors every year eager to take a photo of the tilted structure, its design is quite flawed. The tower's architectural blunder is actually what makes it so famous. Its base, which was constructed on clay, has been causing the tower to lean for centuries, making it one of the major engineering accidents in history. Surprisingly, this flaw has turned out to be a huge tourist attraction, turning a failure into a historical success. It just goes to show that human errors are almost bound to happen. Number 8. CNA Center, Chicago Chicago has another remarkable building called the CNA Center, known for its gorgeous red exterior. But it's also known for one of the more expensive design mistakes in recent times. The construction of the building didn't consider that it might expand when it got warm, so the windows ended up falling to the ground below. As a result of the incident, a window tragically fell and fatally struck someone below. This led to an $18 million settlement and the requirement to replace every window in the 44-story tower. Additionally, there's now a monthly safety check on each panel to ensure everything stays secure. Number 9. The Dubai Aquarium Leak It's hard to imagine that a simple, leaky panel joint could create such chaos, especially for the engineers and construction workers behind Dubai's famous indoor ocean, considered the largest aquarium in the world. Fortunately, they noticed the leak in time, and all the animals in the aquarium were unharmed. However, to repair the leak without disturbing the hundreds of massive sharks and other exotic creatures inside, they had to spend nearly $20 billion. Number 10. Berlin Brandenburg Airport Berlin Brandenburg Airport, also known as Bear Iata, serves as the primary international airport of Berlin, Germany's capital. Located at Schoenefeld, within the state of Brandenburg just south of Berlin, it started operations in late 2020. Currently, it stands as the country's third busiest airport, trailing behind Frankfurt and Munich. 
Back in 2006, when the construction kicked off, the project was meant to cost approximately $2.4 billion and be completed by 2011. However, due to a series of setbacks from failures and corruption, the project faced years of delays. Unfortunately, the repeated extensions could not ensure the airport's opening by the set deadline, leading to its eventual inauguration in 2020. The first setback happened in 2010 when the company involved declared bankruptcy, causing a delay. Further delays arose from non-compliant fire protection measures and the airport's failure to pass the necessary acceptance test to function as an airport. As a result, the construction costs increased to triple the initial estimate, reaching $8.3 billion. Number 10. From the jaw-dropping Three Gorges Dam to the sheer might of the Hoover Dam, the biggest dams on the planet are engineering marvels that have changed the world around them. These dams aren't just structures, they're forces of nature. Their construction has reshaped landscapes, transformed economies, and even altered the flow of rivers. These structures stand as testaments to human ingenuity and ambition. So. Join us as we go behind the scenes of the top 10 most impressive dams on the planet. You wouldn't want to miss out on number one. Trust me, you'll never look at dams the same way again. The 10th biggest dam in the world is Kariba Dam, Zambia and Zimbabwe. Towering at 128 meters and stretching 579 meters, connecting Zambia and Zimbabwe across the Zambezi, this engineering marvel creates the vast Lake Kariba, spanning 280 kilometers and holding a staggering 185 cubic kilometers of water. Back in 1959, the government of the Federation of Rhodesia and Nyasaland commissioned the construction of this double-curvature concrete arch dam. Crafted by Coin e Bellier and built by Impreset of Italy, the initial stage, the Cariba South Power Cavern, cost $135 million. However, political hurdles delayed the final construction, led by Mitchell Construction, until 1977, accumulating a total cost of $480 million and sadly claiming the lives of 86 construction workers. Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, officially inaugurated the dam on May 17, 1960, marking a historic moment. Today, the Kariba Dam is a powerhouse, generating 2,010 megawatts of electricity for Zambia's Copper Belt and Zimbabwe. The dam's dual power stations on the north and south banks contribute to a combined 6,400 gigawatt hours annually. Coming in at number 9 is the Grand Coulee Dam in the USA. Back in the 1920s, the people of Washington state debated how to water the region, and after lots of discussions and reports, they finally started building dams. The first was the Rock Island Dam in 1930. The big push came with the 308 report in 1932, suggesting a series of dams along the Columbia. President Franklin D. Roosevelt backed this plan during the Great Depression, leading to the Bonneville Dam in 1938 and the Grand Coulee in 1942. The Grand Coulee Dam stands tall on the Columbia River in Washington State, USA. It's not as tall as the famous Hoover Dam, but it's way wider, almost a whole mile. Built in the 1930s and 1940s, it was a massive project during the Great Depression. Back then, the Grand Coulee Dam was the biggest concrete dam ever made. While China's Three Gorges Dam is larger now, the Grand Coulee is still a marvel and a cool spot for tourists. Number eight on our list is the Guri Dam, Venezuela. Constructed between 1963 and 1969, this dam is quite an engineering marvel. It is a massive wall made of concrete and earth, stretching a whopping 7,426 meters and towering 162 meters high. It's like a giant barrier holding back the waters of the Caroni River. What makes the Guri Dam even more impressive is the vast Guri Reservoir it creates, covering an area as big as 4,250 square kilometers. That's like having an enormous water playground. The dam's purpose is to store and control water, 
but it also does something even cooler. It generates electricity. The power station connected to the dam is like a huge generator, turning the force of flowing water into electricity. At one point, it was the biggest of its kind globally, beating even the Grand Coulee hydropower plant. However, as time went on, Brazil's Itaipu Dam took the lead. So, the Guri Dam not only tames rivers and forms massive lakes, but also powers up homes and cities with its hydroelectric magic. Quite an impressive feat, isn't it? Number 7 is even more impressive. Meet the Tarbella Dam. The Tarbella Dam is a crucial part of the Indus Basin project, born from a water treaty signed in 1960 between India and Pakistan. This agreement ensured that Pakistan would have a reliable water supply, free from India's upstream control. The dam, finished in 1977, was mainly designed for storing water, not producing power. The beautiful turquoise waters south of the dam reflect the high amount of silt and clay in the released water. The dam is the world's largest earth and rock-filled dam, towering 147 meters above the Indus riverbed, with a massive volume of 142 million cubic meters. Its reservoir covers 37 square kilometers. While the dam successfully stores water for Pakistan's agriculture, it has unintended consequences for the environment. The reduction of seasonal flooding and diminished water flow to the delta has led to a decline in mangrove stands and affected the abundance of certain fish species in the Indus River Delta. The story of Tarbella Dam highlights the delicate balance between meeting human needs and preserving natural ecosystems. The Sayano Shushinskaya Dam in Russia takes the sixth spot. Constructed in 1985, the Sayano Shushinskaya Dam is an impressive piece of engineering situated in the Sayan Mountains. Standing at a height of 242 meters, it ranks as the 17th tallest dam globally. This monumental structure spans a picturesque canyon carved by the mighty Yenisei River, surrounded by a lush forest. Adding to its grandeur, the hydropower station associated with the dam is the world's ninth largest in terms of production capacity. The dam area features six striking bronze figures, paying homage to the skilled individuals who contributed to its construction. Positioned around 500 meters from the dam, these figures offer a prime spot for observation. On the opposite side of the river, a massive water discharge facility is ingeniously integrated into the rock. Notably, the dam underwent extensive reconstruction following a tragic event in 2009. A turbine breakdown led to a catastrophe, claiming the lives of 75 people who were unfortunately trapped in the flooded machine hall. Despite this challenging history, the Sayano Shushinskaya Dam stands today as a testament to resilience and engineering prowess. Taking the spot at number 5 is the Grand Dissens Dam in Switzerland. Standing proudly as the tallest gravity dam globally, reaching a soaring height of 285 meters and spanning 700 meters in length, the Grand Dissens Dam is a true marvel. Its foundation, a robust concrete structure, widens to 200 meters at the base and narrows to a precise 15 meters at the crest, situated at an elevation of 2,365 meters. Impressively, the dam's formidable structure incorporates a staggering 6 million cubic meters of concrete, firmly anchored to the underlying foundation by a grout curtain descending to a depth of 200 meters and extending 100 meters on either side of the valley. While strategically located on the descents, the dam ingeniously taps into water sources from the Zamut, Stafel, Ferpekel, and Arala pumping stations, orchestrating the transport of water through a network of tunnels spanning 100 kilometers into Lac de Dies. Further contributing to its hydraulic prowess, water from the Cluzon Dam, a substantial 87 meters in height, is conveyed from the Lac de Cluzon, enriching the complex's resource portfolio. The intricate web of three penstocks seamlessly channels water from Lac de Dis to power stations like Chandelin, Fione, Nendas, and Budron before gracefully joining the Rhone downstream. 
This collective marvel of pumping stations, power stations, and dams forms a hydrological symphony, orchestrating the flow of water through various reservoirs called the Clouzon Dissance Complex. Notably, the Clouzon Dissance Complex, despite its habit of water transfer mechanisms, diverges from the conventional definition of a pumped storage scheme. A fascinating aspect of this engineering feat lies in its reliance on water primarily sourced from melting glaciers during the summer months. The lake, reaching its zenith in late September, undergoes a clinical rhythm, gradually emptying throughout the winter and reaching its lowest point around April. In addition to being the unrivaled tallest gravity dam globally, the Grand Dissance Dam boasts the title of the seventh tallest dam overall and stands as the loftiest dam in Europe. Moving over to number four, we have the Ziluodu Dam, China. This dam stands proudly as a colossal double curvature arch dam, reaching a height of 285.5 meters and stretching across 700 meters. At the heart of the Jinsha River project, it holds a vast reservoir of 12.67 billion cubic meters, with 6.46 billion cubic meters dedicated to active storage for power generation. The dam boasts a sophisticated design featuring seven surface outlets, eight mid-level orifices, and four spillway tunnels, all capable of an impressive maximum discharge of 32,278 cubic meters per second. Nestled within its structure are two underground power stations strategically placed behind the right and left abutments, each housing nine 770-megawatt Francis turbine generators. The engineering marvel yields a total installed capacity of 13,860 megawatts. Beyond its remarkable power generation capabilities, the Ziluodu serves vital roles in flood control and silt management. Its regulated water releases also contribute to enhancing downstream navigation. The construction of Ziluodu began in 2005, culminating in the commissioning of the first generator in 2013 and the final one in 2014. Operated by China Yangtze Power, this marvel of engineering currently holds the prestigious titles of the fourth largest power station and the fifth tallest dam globally, making it a beacon of technological prowess and environmental stewardship. At number three is the Itaipu Dam, Brazil and Paraguay. The Itaipu Hydroelectric Dam is positioned on the Paraná River, straddling the border of Brazil and Paraguay stretching across 7.9 kilometers and soaring to a towering height of 196 meters. This monumental structure harnesses the previously untapped energy potential of the Paraná River. Amidst the land disputes in the 1960s, both Brazil and Paraguay recognized the promise held by the river. The Act of Iguazu in 1966 and the Treaty of Itaipu in 1973 paved the way for a remarkable joint venture. Itaipu Binacional, a collaborative venture between Brazil and Paraguay, was established to construct and manage the dam, with shared responsibilities for costs and benefits. The construction kicked off in February 1971, culminating in a project that carried a price tag of $17.6 billion upon its operational debut in 1984. Today, with its 20 generating units boasting a capacity of 700 megawatts each, Itaipu stands as the world's largest operational hydroelectric energy producer. In 2018, the energy generated played a pivotal role, supplying nearly 90% of Paraguay's electricity and approximately 15% of Brazil's. Notably, 85% of the energy produced caters to Brazil's needs. While both nations share equal rights to the dam's production, Paraguay, utilizing only 15% of its share, is obligated to sell the surplus to Brazil, with 70% of the proceeds covering construction financing. Number two on our list is the Jinping One Dam, China. Positioned on the Jinping Bend of the Yalong River in Liangshan, Sichuan, China, this tall arch dam, the world's tallest at 305 meters, began its construction journey in 2005, reaching completion in 2014. A powerhouse accompanies the dam, boasting a robust 3,600 megawatt capacity. Annually, it churns out an impressive 16 to 18 billion kilowatt hours of electricity. 
Fueling this powerhouse is a reservoir formed by the towering Arch Dam. Beyond its structural might, the Jinping-1 Dam serves crucial purposes. It plays a pivotal role in meeting the energy demands of a growing industrial and urban landscape. Additionally, the dam enhances flood protection measures, shielding communities from potential disasters. Moreover, it contributes to erosion prevention, ensuring the longevity and stability of the surrounding environment. In essence, the Jinping-1 Dam stands not just as a marvel of engineering, but as a cornerstone for sustainable development and environmental resilience. Now, guess the number one biggest dam in the world. Did you think of the Three Gorges Dam? Then you are correct. The Three Gorges Dam, situated in Hubei Province, China, stands as the world's largest hydroelectricity dam, an engineering marvel across the mighty Yangtze River. Stretching over 2.3 kilometers and soaring to a height of 181 meters, it boasts a capacity of over 10 trillion gallons of water. Initiated in late 1994, the dam's completion unfolded in stages, culminating in the installation of the final generator in 2012. The colossal facility incorporates 32 main water turbines strategically distributed on the north and south sides with an additional underground component. Generating an impressive 22,500 megawatts, surpassing even the renowned Itaipu Dam, the Three Gorges Dam is a pivotal contributor to China's electricity grid. In 2020, an exceptional monsoon season led to a record-breaking annual production of 111.8 terawatt-hours, solidifying its status as a power generation powerhouse. While critics question the dam's hefty construction costs, estimated to exceed the official figure of $23 billion, and express concerns about potential seismic risks, its environmental impact is noteworthy. In a nation heavily reliant on fossil fuels, the dam's contribution of approximately 1.43% of China's electricity generation holds promise for environmental benefits. Despite controversies and challenges, including decreased forest cover during construction, ongoing reforestation efforts demonstrate a commitment to mitigating environmental repercussions. Number 11. For so many years, skyscrapers have stood as a symbol of human achievement and dedication. From the Burj Khalifa to the Chrysler Building, these enigmatic structures have pushed the boundaries of design and engineering. Today, there is a new generation of skyscrapers ready to take the world by storm once again. In this video, we will dive into the top 10 tallest skyscrapers that are set to redefine the limits of human imagination and architectural wonders. You wouldn't want to miss the first, as we've saved the best for the last, because these projects get taller and taller as we approach the end. But before we dive in, click the subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our videos. Number 10. Hyundai Global Business Center This construction is taking place in Seoul, South Korea. The first phase of development on the site began in May 2016 with the demolition of the existing KEPCO facility. The Hyundai Motor Group had planned to build a 569-meter-tall structure, but had to reduce it to 553 meters due to systemic concerns. The building complex will have a floor area of 926,162 meters and will house the new headquarters building, which will have 105 stories and a floor area of 560,443 meters. According to the draft, the building will also include a 155,082 square meter hotel and facility building with 35 stories, a 67,768 square meter music hall with nine floors, a 68,895 square meter convention center with six floors, and a 20,006 square meter exposition hall with four floors. As originally planned, an observatory will be positioned 553 meters above Earth. The 2,000-seat concert hall will be the largest in Gangnam. According to the proposal, the Hyundai Motor Group will also construct a submerged square connecting the complex to the underground Yongdong Bridge, public open space, and a public pedestrian tunnel. As of December 2020, it was revealed that it will cost $3.4 billion to make the Hyundai Global Business Center a reality. But don't get too excited yet, 
as we are just getting started. Number 9. Tower M Tower M is another proposed mega-tall skyscraper project located within the Kuala Lumpur City Center KLCC, in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. The building is now being developed as part of the revised KLCC Creation Master Plan 1995 by KLCC Property Holdings Berhad, which was also responsible for the creation of the Petronas Twin Towers. In 2012, the master plan was updated to improve the development potential of the development's remaining undeveloped parcels. The Tower M precinct would feature three office towers atop a retail podium on four acres of land adjacent to the Percy R and KLCC MRT station, formerly known as KLCC East on the future Putrajaya line. Tower M will be 700 meters or 2,297 feet tall with 145 stories. The landowner, KLCCH, announced in July 2018 that there are no immediate plans to build the office towers. If a need exists, planning is unlikely to begin until 2035. Number 8. Sky City Changsha Sky City is an 838-meter-tall skyscraper in Changsha, Hunan in south-central China. Broad, sustainable building, the prospective builders anticipated the construction would take only 90 days. The total time required was 210 days, including the 120 days required for prefabrication before on-site work began. Pre-construction operations were paused in August 2013 due to future clearances required by government officials. The project will require 270,000 tons of steel. Sustainable building technologies and autonomous research and development will be necessary for its assembly factory. The building's key advantages will be its earthquake resistance, energy efficiency, cleanliness, durability, and materials, which will include recycled business materials, non-aldehyde, non-lead, non-asbestos construction materials, and so on. Modular construction is the technique at the heart of the entire steel structure. The structure would include 6 inches 15 centimeters, of insulated walls and quadruple glazing, which would considerably improve energy efficiency. Sky City, as currently envisioned, would cost $1.46 billion. At $1,500 per square meter of floor space, Sky City would be significantly less expensive than the comparably high Burj Khalifa at $4,500 per square meter. Broad Sustainable Group has already paid 390 million yuan, which is about $63 million, for 67,300 square meters or 724,000 square feet of land. Number 7. Oblisco Capital The Oblisco Capital is one other remarkable futuristic skyscraper proposed for Egypt's new administrative capital. It was unveiled in 2018 as part of Egypt's Vision 2030 to become the world's tallest tower at 1,000 meters. Oblisco Capital, as envisaged, will contain 165 houses, hotel flats, and units of varying sizes. Several hotels, shopping malls, cinemas, residences, leisure facilities, commercial hubs, and medical centers are also proposed. The architecture of the tower is influenced by both pharaonic and art deco influences. The dimensions of the Oblisco Capital are inspired by Egyptian obelisks. Louvers, influenced by the art deco style, rotate according to the sun's inclination, decreasing heat during the day. The Nile River is portrayed in the project's design via the canal that connects the project's land corners. The pattern on the tower's exterior is based on an Egyptian lotus blossom motif utilized during the pharaonic era. Number 6. Burj Mubarak Al-Kabir Tower Kuwait surprised the world when it announced the building of the Burj Mubarak Al-Kabir. This surprise stemmed mostly from the fact that the skyscraper will cost a whopping 25 billion Kuwaiti dinars, and it will stand 1,001 meters high, which surpasses the height of the Burj Khalifa. The project is expected to cover an area of about 250 square kilometers and will also include residential, commercial, and recreational facilities, plus a massive central park. The enigmatic building will have a total number of 234 floors with enough space to house 7,000 people. The choice of design for this project is said to have been inspired by a traditional Islamic minaret and it's expected to be completed in the space of 25 years. 
Number 5. Sky Mile For so many years, Tokyo architects have imagined a massive structure joining the beaches of Tokyo Bay. This is because the city's population is rapidly increasing and there isn't enough land to accommodate everyone. Following this dream, the Sky Mile Tower was introduced. The Sky Mile Tower, which will be erected on water, will turn the less efficient horizontal growth of urban life into a more land-efficient vertical rise. It will stand 1,700 meters tall, more than twice as tall as the world's tallest structure, the Burj Khalifa. This massive structure is part of the next Tokyo concept, which depicts a thriving city that can adapt to climate change. The Sky Mile Tower will have 421 stories and a floor area of approximately 4.5 million square feet. The Sky Mile Tower is a key component of Next Tokyo 2045, which includes an archipelago of reclaimed land serving over 500,000 people. Number 4. Dubai City Tower when you think about Dubai, you think about tall skyscrapers and architectural marvels that have never been seen before. So it's no surprise that it ranks among the first five tallest futuristic skyscrapers. Aside from the Burj Khalifa, which already holds the title of the tallest standing skyscraper in the world, the Dubai City Tower, also known as the Dubai Vertical City, is another massive skyscraper that promises to do better than the Burj Khalifa. The ultra-tall tower is intended to accommodate a city of tens of thousands of permanent people. The skyscraper was designed to be 7,875 feet or 2,400 meters tall to exhibit cutting-edge future construction methods. After the Tokyo Tower of Babel, Xseed, and the Ultima Tower, the Dubai City Tower is the fourth tallest proposed construction. In fact, the Dubai City Tower has a height of 8,686 feet or 2,648 meters when the spire is included. Number 3. The Ultima Tower The Ultima Tower is a two-mile tall, one-mile wide building that will be created to safeguard the environment from overdevelopment. The Ultima Tower will be the tallest structure ever built in the United States. It stands around 11,000 feet, 3,353 meters tall. The tower is a futuristic skyscraper project that will cost $210 billion to build and will be located in San Francisco Bay, California. Eugene Tsui is the tower designer and it is nearly double the height of the popular Grand Canyon. It is also four times taller than the current world's tallest structure, the Burj Khalifa. The Ultima Tower has a total of 500 stories. Because of its tensile, trumpet-bell-shaped design, it is both strong and aerodynamic, making it an excellent choice for exceptionally tall buildings. Number 2. Xseed 4000 The Xseed 4000 is one of the most anticipated skyscrapers. It is intended to have a 4-kilometer or 2.5-mile height, 6-kilometer or 3.7-mile sea base, and 800-floor capacity to house 500,000 to a million people. Over 3 million tons of steel would be used to construct this structure. Unlike traditional skyscrapers, the Xseed 4000 will actively shield its occupants from significant internal and exterior air pressure gradations and weather fluctuations caused by its vast elevation. Its design asks for the use of solar energy to keep internal environmental conditions stable. Here's the issue with this project. The Xseed 4000 will be vulnerable to earthquakes and tsunamis due to its projected location in the Pacific Ring of Fire, the world's most active volcano area. This worry has made proponents of the project question whether it will still take place. At 2,004 meters, the Xseed 4000 is expected to be twice the height of the Shimizu Megacity Pyramid. Number 1. Tower of Babel the Tokyo Tower of Babel is the world's tallest projected structure. It was inspired by the Biblical Tower of Babel, a skyscraper that could reach the heavens, and it was first proposed in 1992. This Tower of Babel would be 10 kilometers tall, with the main goal of population support, as this area could house up to 30 million people. 
It will most likely take over a hundred years to complete and would cost 3 trillion yen, 27.2 billion dollars. The Tokyo Tower of Babel, which will be built on land, will feature several buildings that will be used for a variety of functions. Because it's on land, it won't corrode as quickly as the Shimizu Megacity Pyramid or XC4000. Its architecture is going to be built of suction cup-like structures on land that link to upper levels that are similar in form and connect to higher floors, all kept secure by a large, wide support in the middle, providing high stability for such a tall structure. The floor's various uses were mostly for residential and commercial purposes. The 1 to 3 kilometer sections are intended for office and hotel facilities, while the 3 to 6 kilometer floors are intended for education, administration, and recreation. The uppermost portions are reserved for industrial, experimental research, and base facilities, while the very top of the building is reserved for space exploration and solar energy. For the time being, it will be the tallest future skyscraper on the planet. But for how long? Number 12. The world's fastest growing megacity, Lagos, Nigeria, is set to have a new $6 billion financial hub at the shores of the Atlantic Ocean. The project, called the Echo Atlantic City, will rise out of the ocean on reclaimed land and will have everything from skyscrapers to luxury residences and shopping malls. It is already an active venue for popular concerts and sports events. But more importantly, the development also claims to have saved the Lagos coastline from erosion. However, not everything has gone according to plan for this privately funded mega-project. While it claims to have saved Lagos, is the city sinking everything else around it? Stay with us to unpack the full story as Echo Atlantic City moves closer to completion. Lagos has been in a fight with the ocean waves for over a century. Since the early 1900s, the city has lost at least two kilometers of land to the Atlantic Ocean. In 2005, one of the most popular waterfronts on Victoria Island neighboring Lagos, the Bar Beach, caved into the ocean, making it clear that drastic steps were needed to save the city. So, in 2007, two billionaire siblings came up with a solution. They would build a new city using only reclaimed land that was previously lost to the ocean. This new city was to be called the Echo Atlantic City, and the plans were set in motion in 2009. Echo Atlantic wouldn't just give Lagos its land back, but would also help overcome the real estate shortages in Lagos, a city of 22 million people, which is set to grow even bigger. The first step was to reconstruct the Victoria Island Peninsula, which was non-existent at the time. So just like Dubai's man-made islands, Echo Atlantic was to be built on water. To establish a solid foundation, 95 million cubic meters of sand will now be dredged up from a depth of up to 15 meters inside the Atlantic Ocean. Land reclamation will add at least 10 kilometers to the Lagos coastline, which means that the city now makes up more than 20% of Nigeria's coastline. The reclamation process suffered a setback in 2012, when a massive storm surge at the Echo Atlantic killed 16 people. In the aftermath of the tragedy, the calls to protect the city from the ocean grew louder, and the planners came up with yet another solution. The idea was to build a concrete seawall inside the ocean to protect the city from the raging Atlantic. This fortification project, called the Great Wall of Lagos, uses 100,000 concrete blocks to form a barrier around the vulnerable area. Each of these stones weighs five tons and is made on site and placed inside a predefined grid using a GPS system for accuracy. The sea defense system is 18 meters high, 12.5 meters wide, and it stretches 8.5 kilometers along the shoreline. Built after taking into consideration the future threats of global warming, the wall's massive dimensions will enable it to handle storms that can happen once a century. Once completed, the wall will be topped with a paved walkway and provide visitors with recreational space to take advantage of the serene ocean views. 
The Great Wall of Lagos is now more than 80% complete, and the planners say it is already fulfilling its primary purpose of protecting Lagos. As the work on the peninsula and the sea defense continues, Echo Atlantic is already moving ahead with some of its most ambitious projects. Echo Atlantic is divided into eight districts, each developed for specific commercial, residential, and entertainment activities. After the completion of the city's first phase of land reclamation in 2013, work commenced on a residential complex containing five skyscrapers. The Echo Pearl Towers range from 24 to 33 floors each, and the first skyscraper was completed in 2016. Another 133-meter-tall tower has also topped out, while the rest remain under development. In addition to the Echo Pearl Towers, a dozen skyscrapers, like the Lagos Sky Tower and the Alpha One, are also under construction. The Echo Atlantic will be home to some 300,000 residents when completed, so the majority of these high-rises will be residential, along with a few commercial buildings. A sprawling road network is already connecting different parts of the Echo Atlantic City. The most significant of these roads is the Echo Boulevard, a 1,500-meter-long, eight-lane boulevard that will become the focal point of the business district. Echo Boulevard was completed back in 2016 and has drawn comparisons with Fifth Avenue in New York. Within the next five years, the city will also have its independent power grid, a sustainable water supply, and an elaborate sewage system. But perhaps the most significant development at the Echo Atlantic came in March 2022, when the United States approved construction of a half a billion dollar consulate in the city. Planned across 12 acres of Echo Atlantic land, it will be the biggest U.S. consulate in the world upon completion. The benefits of this $537 million project will also trickle down directly into the Nigerian economy. During the course of construction, an estimated $95 million will be invested in the local economy, and the project will employ 2,500 Nigerian citizens. Construction on the new consulate building will be completed in five years. While the building will be iconic in itself, the significance of a U.S. consulate inside the Echo Atlantic City goes beyond that. The project is being seen as a global seal of approval for the Echo Atlantic and shows that it will become one of the most important destinations in Nigeria. This will also attract massive foreign investment, with big multinational and commercial entities now eager to establish a footprint in the world's fastest-growing megacity. It seems that the Echo Atlantic Mega Project is on the right track to become Africa's economic hub in the sea. However, behind all the outward projections of success, the project still faces myriad problems and an unrelenting wave of criticism. The land reclamation from the Atlantic has meant that the Echo Atlantic has the appearance of being created out of thin air. However, it is the same reclamation process that has led to question marks over the sustainability of the project. The planners claim to have saved the Lagos coastline. However, the dredging work has left the shoreline vulnerable in other parts. Critics say that the Great Wall of Lagos is only protecting the new development while diverting the ocean waves towards neighboring coastal communities. When you build a wall to stop a storm surge, it will move to the side searching for a low spot. If it is blocked out by Echo Atlantic, the surge will go to the island next door instead. One such island is the Alpha Beach, situated 12 kilometers to the east of Echo Atlantic. The residents claim that ever since the construction of Echo Atlantic started, Alpha Beach has kept sinking into the sea. It was once the most popular tourist destination in Lagos, but the rising water has meant that half of it has washed away. The main Alpha Beach Road is now completely submerged, and apartment blocks known to have the best ocean views can no longer be occupied. Experts put the blame squarely on the sand dredging that has taken millions of cubic meters of sand away from its natural setting. 
This constant interference with the ecosystem is bound to change ocean currents and impact low-lying communities in proximity to the Echo Atlantic. Displaced currents have so far washed away more than 25 meters of land from the shoreline. Moreover, taking out massive chunks of sand from the ocean floor has also left holes in the once smooth ocean bed. These craters, some of which can be up to 8 meters deep, compromise the safety of properties close to the shoreline. Most of the communities have already moved further back and are forced to live in makeshift residences away from their homes. The drastic consequences paint only half the picture. In the beginning, Echo Atlantic was also promoted as the solution for the rising housing needs of the locals. However, given the commercial nature of the project, none of the original residents have moved into the city. The reason is the skyrocketing property prices in the city. A single square meter of land in this real estate hub can cost up to $1,700. The starting price for a two-bedroom apartment will go over $100,000. Meanwhile, the average income in Lagos is less than $600 a month making it difficult for the locals to transition into the new city. This is why Echo Atlantic is being labeled as the city of the rich and will only widen the wealth gap between communities in Nigeria. Echo Atlantic City is a game changer for the Lagos Lagoon in many ways. It shows that Nigeria is capable of delivering billion dollar mega projects and is ready to transform its economy. However, it all comes at a price that will mostly be paid by indigenous communities. Apart from that, Echo Atlantic also needs to come up with more innovative solutions to get rid of coastal erosion. The harsh reality is that the ocean waves are still hurting communities around the Echo Atlantic. And before long, climate experts predict that water levels will rise by at least a meter by the year 2100, which means that the Echo Atlantic is not out of troubled waters yet. Its proximity to the Atlantic Ocean, combined with the perils of climate change, will continue to threaten the coastline. For now, this $6 billion city is on its way to become one of the most recognizable locations on Earth. Number 13. Turkey has just unveiled one of the most challenging megaprojects in the country's history. A dam in northeastern Turkey that will generate enough electricity to power a million homes and reduce the country's dependence on expensive oil and gas imports. It is one of the tallest dams in the world, situated in one of the world's toughest terrains. The mountains in northeastern Turkey seem ominous, with the highest rising more than 3,000 meters above sea level. Most of these remain snow-capped and give the region an imposing look. But how did Turkey build a 275-meter-tall dam in one of the most challenging regions in the world? This is the story of the Yusufeli Dam, a billion-dollar megaproject set to reshape the country's economy. In a country that imports about three-quarters of its energy, more domestic resources are always needed. Turkey's answer to this import problem is hydropower. Today, Turkey has more than 700 hydroelectric facilities accounting for 44% of the country's power needs. But the push towards hydropower is showing no signs of slowing down. Over the past two decades, Turkey's population growth and economic expansion have given rise to some massive hydropower projects, 200 of which are under construction at the moment. A part of this push are the 17 hydroelectric dams on the Koru River in the Black Sea region of northeastern Turkey. While many of these remain under construction, the Yusufeli Dam is all set to add to the national grid. While Turkey has bigger dams, like the Ataturk Dam and Ilisu Dam, what makes the Yusufeli Dam unique is the challenging topography of the region. Surrounded by steep mountains, the town of Yusufeli sits on the bank of the Koru River, tearing through a narrow valley. The area has been marked as a suitable location for a dam for decades. The initial studies for a hydropower project here date back to the 1970s. It was part of the Koru River Hydropower Development Master Plan, which was fully drawn up by the 1980s. 
After years of feasibility studies, the foundations for the dam were eventually laid in 2013. Expected to be fully operational by the end of 2023, the power plant will have the capacity to generate 1.89 terawatt hours of electricity per year, enough to power more than a million homes. However, the dam is much more than an energy source. Two decades in the making, it is an engineering marvel, unlike any other mega project in Turkey's history. Here's how they built the tallest arch dam in Turkey and the fifth tallest in the world. The first step towards constructing this behemoth was excavation for tunnels to make the construction site accessible. A special concrete facility was established for construction, whose foundation was excavated at a depth of 450 meters. The area's complex geology meant that this process took much longer than expected. However, this was arguably the most important part of construction, since there was no existing path to deliver giant construction equipment. Construction also so slowed because of persistent fog and snow that decreased visibility for multiple weeks. The overhead conditions also posed challenges for the team's productivity and safety. Close to 40 tunnels and more than a dozen bridges made up the final route to the dam. Construction crews blasted tunnels through the rock from the highest point of the dam to get down to where the structure's foundation would be. The tunnels also provided access to the dam's crest through a benching system carved out of the rock. In addition to the tunnels, huge caves were also excavated for the construction of the dam. The largest of these caves reached 110 meters in length, 55 meters in height, and 31 meters in width. One major step was to deliver equipment ranging from bulldozers to cranes to the site. Several overhead conveyor lines were erected to make this possible. All equipment was securely fixed to the surface with ropes and transported in the air like toys. The slope between the dam's foundation and the rock above it was steep, with loose rocks that could easily fall on work crews below if not secured. So 80-meter ropes were driven on both sides of the dam to prevent deformation of the surrounding mountains and to increase its strength. The dam was originally planned to open in 2018. However, the construction proved so challenging that the teams could only reach concrete placement by that time. To make up for the extra excavation time, those in charge of construction sought efficiencies in placing concrete for the dam's main arch. One solution was to place several concrete batching plants at the project site. Once again, concrete was conveyed to the plants by the overhead cabling system built before construction started. Cooling and heating techniques were used to keep the concrete in good shape and the construction going in all weather conditions. The Arch of Yusufeli Dam today consists of 29 separate blocks connected at the joints by pumping concrete. As I mentioned earlier, Yusufeli is a tall dam and water from the reservoir falls into the turbines from 220 meters high. This could have caused erosion. So to overcome the problem, 90-meter energy-breaking pools were also built. With challenges every step of the way, the Yusufeli Dam was finally completed towards the end of 2021, and the hydropower project was inaugurated in 2022. While it was initially delayed, completing the dam so quickly after concrete placement is still a big achievement given the delays caused by the pandemic. At its peak, close to 7,000 workers participated in the construction of the Yusufeli Dam. The hydroelectric plant on the Yusufeli Dam will have an installed capacity of 558 megawatts, divided into three turbines of 186 megawatts each. Once fully operational, the dam is expected to contribute more than $220 million to the Turkish economy annually. This means that the $2 billion project will be paid off in less than a decade. The Turkish government is also hoping for an influx of tourism to the region, thanks to the stunning reservoir. This uptake in tourism will also enhance regional development in the long run. The dam itself has been equipped with the latest technologies, including seismic devices that can measure the depth and magnitude of earthquakes in its immediate vicinity. The Yusufeli Dam continues to fill with water, now close to reaching its maximum height. 
there has been huge fanfare in Turkey regarding the completion of the dam. President Recep Tayyip Erdogan said at the inauguration that the dam was a testament to Turkey's growing ambition and that it established new development standards for the country. However, not everything is good news when it comes to one of the biggest mega-projects in Turkey's history. While it promises to bring economic progress, the dam threatens the livelihoods of thousands living in and around Yusufeli. The residents stand on hilltops of the Kakar mountain range and watch their town drown slowly. The dam has expectedly made flooding a common occurrence and uprooted close to 10,000 residents from the nearby village. As the water keeps rising, the artificial lake underneath the dam becomes more and more unforgiving. It is now the seventh time that the authorities have had to relocate the residents. People who have spent their entire lives nestled in a beautiful landscape are forced to move to a newly constructed town nearby. Those who protest have been detained, and those who accept their fate have been relocated to newly built government housing. However, uprooting businesses and moving away is not a preferred outcome. Those moving to the new facilities will have new neighbors, and in some cases, even immediate family members are being assigned housing on the other side of town. In addition to Yusuf Ali, hundreds of thousands more are expected to lose their homes along the banks of the Koru River. The criticism goes beyond forced migration. Constructing the dam has resulted in a massive loss of biodiversity. At least 20 rare plants in Turkey have been threatened, and countless more changes are yet to be observed. However, the authorities have called this a necessary cost of progress. Amidst all the uproar, the Yusuf Ali Dam has taken its place among Turkey's most impressive megaprojects. Number 14. The only difference between a controlled demolition and a dramatic destruction is a small error. When demolitions take an unexpected turn, chaos ensues. And today, I have compiled the most gripping incidents of demolitions gone wrong. Number 1. Though we will consider this fall a failure, the crane operator won my respect. As soon as he saw that the chimney was cracking and may fall to his side, he immediately turned his crane cabin away for a safer exit and, well, the huge structure fell right onto the crane. But he was perfectly fine. Number 2. These multi-angle clips hail from Vordingborg, Denmark, where a silo demolition went so wrong it ended up destroying a public library in 2018. Well, it was a spectacular failure as the silo fell in the opposite direction, resulting in damage to the small section of an adjacent library. Good thing no injuries were reported as the 53-meter tower fell. Number 3. Now this clip from 2016 has everything. Drama, thrills, escape, and skills. A multi-level parking garage in Houston, Texas during its demolition posed a serious risk to a crane operator when it unexpectedly collapsed onto an excavator operator. The video captured the dramatic moment as the building fell, but those machines are insanely strong. The fall didn't do much damage. A quick-thinking colleague and another excavator also jumped in to assist the operator, who quite remarkably came out unharmed from the incident. Number 4. Another day, another demolition team with another failure. This time from India in 2018. A crane operator was busy bringing down a water tower with no idea of how crazy things were going to be for him. As the building started to fall, he noticed the direction of the fall was not right. Luckily, he was perfectly fine and escaped just in time. Nevertheless, we can call it a close call for sure. Number 5. This 2013 clip from Australia is another embarrassing episode. A demolition team tried bringing down a 4,000-ton building with 150 pounds of explosives, but they were left red-faced after the structure got stuck leaning to one side. 
Cranes were called in to give some necessary pushes before the building finally collapsed after 40 minutes of mimicking the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Number 6. Here is another bunch of men with the brightest of all ideas in the world. Demolish a silo using a sledgehammer, not realizing the danger this scary adventure could pose. As expected, after some hits on the building, the silo came crashing down. Lucky for these people, they managed to escape just in the nick of time, or otherwise they would have made the headlines for all the wrong and sad reasons. Woo! My hammer. You all right? Yeah. Number 7. Maintaining a safe distance from the site of demolition is a precaution that saves lives, and this clip is here to prove me right. At first, you might even miss what has happened, but let me slow down the video a bit for you. This happened during the demolition of the buildings of O.P. Prostozhov in the Czech Republic, where some flying stones almost killed people watching the demolition. That is the kind of close call which sends shivers down one's spine, even years after the incident. Number 8. And here is the saddest entry of the video. In January 2020, during snowy weather in St. Petersburg, Russia, workers were removing the roof of a sports complex. A drone captured intense footage of a man using a blowtorch to cut metal supports. Most connections were already dismantled, but when he cut a crucial metal cable, the heavy roof came down on the entire structure, causing the sports complex to collapse instantly. The worker tried to escape, but the damage was too severe. Sadly, his body was later found in the rubble. These heartbreaking moments reveal how important safety measures and precautions are during the demolition of buildings. Number 9. And here is how not to demolish an old bridge. This clip from Israel showed so many wrong things during the leveling of a bridge. It was a blunder from the beginning. The two heavy cranes were definitely weakening the bridge, and when the center gave way, everything came crashing down. But thanks to the advanced safety measures taken during the engineering of the cranes, none of the operators were injured. Number 10. In 2017, a clip surfaced on the internet featuring a boy throwing bricks at a pillar. All he did was remove some bricks and hit the pillar with them, and the whole building came crashing down. The young man escaped in the nick of time, making it one close call. I'm actually amazed how fragile that building was. Number 11. And this is an excellent demolition gone wrong. The perfect landings of falling structures on the wrong sides are my favorite things to watch. Number 12. And this building refused to be demolished and ended up standing uptight and upright in front of a bunch of spectators. Number 13. If efforts had marks, this farmer would have topped the exam. Yes, he decided to bring down a silo using a sledgehammer. I couldn't believe this DIY could work, but here comes the silo crashing down. Small inconvenience though, the silo was very stubborn and refused to come down completely. Oh no! Fail. The frustration was real, but the man then decided to use a tractor to level the rest of the structure. An absolute win in the end. Yes. Number 14. Here is another clever crane operator rolling his cabin to escape the falling metal. Number 15. As satisfying as the videos of big structures getting demolished are, the ones that bring down trees and utility poles and blow out windows are pretty terrifying. The planned implosion of smokestacks of Cheswick Power Plant in Pennsylvania didn't go as initially thought, and two chimneys of 750 feet and 550 feet caused an air blast that shattered through windows and brought down trees and utility poles, resulting in a power surge that affected the electronics in the area. 
The smokestacks at the former Cheswick power plant came down on Friday morning. The only good thing is no one was near the demolition site, so no injuries were reported, and the repair work started 15 minutes after the implosion. Number 16. Take a look at this majestic demolition. What a perfect landing on the scrub tower. If only that was done on purpose. A company in Ohio was commissioned to control blast four towers at a power plant. While the first three towers adhered to the initial plan, the fourth tower changed directions due to unknown reasons and decided to take down this perfectly fine scrub tower with it. I guess it's all five now. An embarrassing fail, but an epic landing. Number 17. The process of demolishing buildings has always fascinated me. Look at this one. The old water chimney is ready to be reduced to rubble, but it has two surprises for us. One for the cameraman, and the other for those in charge of leveling it. The chimney was stronger than they thought it was and left a rolling embarrassment for the workers. Number 18. In 2009, a building demolition in Turkey went seriously wrong when, instead of collapsing, it rolled over onto its roof and ended up hitting another building. Good news though, the nearby buildings were evacuated before the demolition as a precaution, and whoever said precaution saves life was correct. Apparently missing other buildings, good news is no one was hurt. Number 19. If going in the wrong direction could be represented by a structure, this power plant chimney in Springfield would be it. We don't know if it was due to a change in the air pressure or a minor error on the part of the workers, but the chimney fell right across the wires into a building storing transformers. I'm surprised how chill the spectators were to this whole scenario. Whoops. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Lucky thing, they were far from the demolition scene. I don't think trains are going to come through here for a little bit. Oh. Number 20. While searching for all these demolitions gone wrong videos, I came across this masterpiece of engineering that should be shown. A jackhammer suspended from a crane precisely demolishes the bridge. Unbelievable. Number 21. Imagine people watching and news cameras rolling during a demolition, and suddenly everything goes haywire. This is exactly what happened during a controlled implosion of Ohio Edison Mad River Power Plant's smokestack in 2010. The 275-foot tower fell in the wrong direction, directly on a bunch of live wires, resulting in a couple of deafening blasts. No one was hurt, but plenty of people were scared by something and someday they say they'll never forget. Luckily, no one was hurt in this unforeseen incident. Number 22. In 2022, another demolition debacle took the stage. A crew was asked to remove a crane from a dockyard, but that planned crane demolition turned into an unplanned water ballet when the crane fell right into the ocean. Demolitions gone wrong are one thing, but I have a bunch of other interesting and informative videos like this. These are the most useless mega projects in the world. Why don't you click on it for an epic dose of infotainment?